Welcome everybody back to the LPL. Welcome to top six it's time to get the real games underway now boys and girls it's time to get into the very best the lpl has to offer i'm much i'm joined by nymera and nymera honestly we've got an absolute treat for ourselves today oh man folks we've had what three best of fives go to the full distance in the last three get three days we've not had any shortage of drama coming through but honestly the lpl playoffs is so comprehensive that the further you get into it it just keeps ramping the fact that we've already gotten to this point with this amount of intensity particularly with weibo getting now through into the third round after yesterday's games is just continuing to ramp up it's absolutely insane you can see three five game best of fives in a row so far <laughs> and we've only just got started that's just four of the series out of the way we're going into that first one at the top there fpx versus nip you can see it just underneath me there as well and uh, this one is inevitably going to be a bit of a banger we've got the rookie of the split versus rookie himself we'll get into all that in a little bit first let's talk nip let's talk how they got here because you know a lot a lot of the time you'd expect rookie to be on the team that's the higher seed this is the fifth seed coming in nip have had to do a best of five to get here already and they only just made it through that best of five by the very skin of their team yeah you know nip there were a lot of questions about this team they went seven and one starting off and then things kind of after that point started to fall off a bit of a cliff so we had a lot of questions about them in terms of well okay how good are they actually in terms of just looking beyond just the series score and going uh, beyond that too and when we think of this team you know the last series they had it was a win um but team w really really pushed them it had to be a lot of heroics you know shandy had a fantastic rumble game with this one that we saw first off but honestly for me i think rookie walks away with another very confident series I mean, the amount of time rookies buying in this one, there's so many in this game, so many of the fights were totally split into Photicon the Jinx able to clean up so many of them. I love this moment as well where Fofo tried to <laughs> hide in the brush that gave me a great joy during the game. But an absolutely uh, insane series in terms of it being a bit of a barn burner, but also in terms of WE being extremely close in game number four to actually winning this series out. Absolutely. You know, I think WE walked away from this series absolutely not embarrassing themselves or anything close to that. They can walk away with their heads held high. NIP, of course, they're the ones which move forwards and they have a chance to, you know, continue their story in spring. They are going to have a hard time today, though. I really feel like against WE, there were definitely some points where it felt like particularly Shanji um, and sometimes Draw as well really struggled to get into the game and they were shut out quite comprehensively. Uh, and that's going to be a problem, um, particularly running against such a comprehensive team as FTX as they're facing today. And I think moments like this in the series right where you can see at the top of the screen 17 to 5 before that play and then somehow we managed to win a couple of fights they almost get back in and then we have this moment in champ select going into game number five fofo locks in the way you can see him literally praying and then the whole series ends with aki winning a 50 50 for elder dragon and nip somehow coming on top in a 45 minute game like oh. this series could not have been closer it's heartbreaking for the but for NIP, it is the beginning. It is the first step on a journey. I will say, it's going to be a little bit tough for them because FPX is a team with some serious tenacity. Uh, like, those late games got a little bit dodgy, but if there's anyone that can lead this charge, if there's anyone that can be stalwart in the mid lane, it's going to be rookie. We have to talk about this guy. It is just the legend. The legend himself. Um, but we have to talk about for rookie. Um, he has gotten so close to international performances for a very long time, but he hasn't been at one for six, well, five years now, five years since 2019. It really is just such a different conversation um, about this player nowadays. You know, his last couple of years, he might have had some individual performances, but has it really been rookie himself? I don't know whether we can say that. This split has been good from him, though. He's had some real clutch moments, and I really feel like, you know, against WE, he was, for me, the best performing member of NIP. Yet again, that's not an uncommon thing. He needs to take that a step further for, though. It is not good enough, really, to just be just the best player on your team. You need to be something unreal to overcome yeah. the teams which you're reaching the level of right now at this stage in playoffs. So many fans at home wanting Rookie to make an international again, and it feels like he's in form to do so. Some of these Talia early game plays, I mean, this ace, 
Soul game do I even need to say anything? Like, if you didn't go watch, go watch game number five, or maybe after the series today, because this it's going to be a bagger today. You don't want to miss this, but uh, <laughs> you've got to go watch this Ace Hole game from Rookie. You've got to watch some of his Talia early games as well. Like, he, when he's given the tools, he can absolutely get this team into his backpack and carry it forwards. I'm hoping that we get to see that today because he's going to need to step up because on the opposite side, we've got a very different conversation where NIP are like now starting to prove themselves. They are setting expectations for themselves. Whereas FBX, they've already set expectations over the last few years. Like when you look at their last two years, it's been a bit tragic. Like since 2021, um, since he who shall not be named left the team, it really has been a tough run for FPX. But now this year, they're setting F, uh, it's setting expectations. I nearly said FPX stations there. <laughs> I wish we should have, we should have <laughs> done the graphic battle. Uh, they're, they're exceeding their expectations now. Uh, we've got this brand new jungler, Milky Way, coming on in, and suddenly everything has turned around. You can see 2-1 against top esports, 2-0 against JDG, and 7-2 and against the top teams. Seven, if it was just 10 teams in this league, they would be 7-2 and two and in second place. That is absurd. Yeah, and the fact that they, they have beaten these teams, not just with lucky upsets and uh, and cheese and just take, keeping people on their back foot or something like that, it hasn't been that case. They beat top esports with macro. They beat them with a gold deficit. You know, when they played against so many other teams like this too, another late game masterclass from Milky Way, who hops over all and immediately assassinates Xiaohu in the late game in this game against Weibo as well. This team not only has intricate sta um, like ways to play the map and good early games, they have it all. They have a real understanding of how to play the map. This team is not a team which you would expect from, you know, what we thought actually collectively as a casting team and the community in large, we thought this team would be bottom four, bottom five, somewhere around that. They are nowhere near that. They have completely flipped that to the other yep. side of things. And the way that they have done that has really, really been the important part for, they, for me. They haven't cheesed. They haven't just played through brutal early games and then they can't play late game. They do everything yeah. well. And it feels like a lot of that is down to our galactic prodigy in the jungle. We're going to talk about Milky Way. We would be remiss not to feature this guy on the broadcast. And like you, the stats are all obviously absolutely insane. He's the rookie of the split, third all pro. He's a shot caller. He's a team leader. And then you look at the quote from Shallow in an interview, literally saying Milky Way doesn't make mistakes. Like. This guy has had one of the best breakout splits in the history of League of Legends. It's comparable to that of Baker, yeah. but he's not played in playoffs just yet. Today is where he has to prove that all of this matters. Yeah, really, the conversation about this person who has come out of absolutely nowhere um, have just been interesting to hear. They've been fascinating to hear. You know, um, I, I was I was watching some of his LDL games before he came into this year. You know, my brother's a big watcher of the LDL. I'm saying, like, look, watch out for this guy. He's on the level of some of these really big players. We'll see exactly how far he can go. And he has been just such a breakout star. And the fact that he's done it, again, in the way that he's done, this is not the stats and the player, the, the, the play of a, of a rookie stepping up to the main league. Rookies tend to just have, you know, holes in their gameplay. They tend to not understand the importance of some big concepts yeah. of the game. This guy just does it all. And the fact that even against the top tier teams, you can't shut this guy down has been so important. And I think clips like this are the most important ones where this isn't even a fight one, and yet Milky Way manages to make it somewhat even. These early games where he finds angles where Tien spent a little bit of time in mid lane, so he has a small timing window to gank in this bottom side, and it turns into a positive play for FPX. And you'll see in the, the final clip as well, because this one turns into a bit of a scrap, let's be honest, but Milky Way <laughs> comes out on top of it, off the back of that timing window. But this final clip as well is what you were talking about before. This is a very complete player because yes, he can play these carries, but he can also play things like this Lee Sin. When you look at how he plays this fight, he's about 100 HP for the vast majority of it, but he stays in the fight, he stays supporting his team, and he sets up two further kills. And the fact that the only way you can make these kind of plays is if your team is on the same page too, to kind of spread that to the rest of your team and not just be a one-man army, but someone that also just enables these players to your team is also so crucial. Um, you know, I kind of want to get ahead of this a little bit where people say that it's just Milky Way on this team. It's the fact that Milky Way does this in conjunction with his team and everyone is committing to the same style of gameplay. It doesn't feel like there's a big, you know, ego on the team which is dragging stuff in a different direction. It feels like they're really going in the same way has been so important. Now we need to see if they can bring that to playoffs. It is still his first playoffs 
as a player in the LPL. That can do some strange things to your mentality in your gameplay. Yeah. I just really, really hope we get to see this again. I think the scariest thing for me is, as you say, this is his first playoffs. There's a lot of pressure on this guy. There's a lot of hype behind this guy. Uh, we're also... We're just before the double elimination right now. He's still in single elimination right now. This best of five decides everything for him. Now, apparently, we've got uh, we've got a best rookie little feature for you guys. So let's take a closer look at Milky Way. Imagine the pressure this guy's feeling. You're watching this montage, some of the mechanics at play, like the level of expectation on this guy's shoulders. But then we had that interview with him the other day, like it was a couple of weeks ago now, where we finally got him on stage. We got to hear from him and he's eloquent, he's confident, he knows how to lead a team. Honestly, I don't know how you could not be invested in this guy's story right now. Oh, absolutely. And um, there is a real conversation about, well, you know, how much this player can be compared to the likes of the real great debuts. Um, I'm, I'm a, you know, in the LPL, of course, we had Bo recently, who, of course, has, uh, had a great debut. I think Tarzan is another jungle prodigy who I think really came out of the gate strong. Even then, I think Milky Way, given the level of expectations and the teammates around him who had questions about their play and whether they could stand up to the real top teams, has, again, just really put this guy into the limelight. And, you know, we will talk about some of those players as well. Don't worry, folks, we'll get around to them. But we just need to do justice to how good this rookie split has been. It would feel like we'd be missing something if we didn't really do it justice. I do think that there is a conversation to be had, like and like you said, we'll talk about these whole rosters, but it does feel coming into today that narratively speaking, yes, we've got Milky Way versus Rookie. Both kind of the big names of their rosters. The fact that you can say that after Milky Way's literally played not even a full split is kind of insane. Uh, but also the way that these two teams play, it does feel like Milky Way is the driving force for FPX. And Rookie really has been the driving force for NIP as well. Like when you look at that series versus WE, Rookie really was the superstar for me in, in a lot of those games. Like Shanji kind of on the Renekton, leaving a lot to be desired. When he got his picks, it was good, but it feels like he's someone you can play around. It feels like, you know, life as well. One of these players where he can be really, really exceptional in the right pick, in the right situation. But if you ban him out, if you take things like this rumble off the table, he can struggle a little bit more. It feels like Milky Way and Rookie are the two that you can't necessarily play around. Those are the... Yeah. the that extra factor that's just so hard to describe. And that's what makes it so exciting coming into today. And I think that's why it's like, every time we start talking about another play, I just want to go back to talking about Milky Way and Rocky because these well, guys are just so excited. <laughs> well, I will say watching that footage has, it's reminded me of a very sad thing which has happened. Um, oh. And it is that Aki has cut his hair. He used to have oh, just no. the most wonderful, fluffy hair, kind of like going out to just, just absolute massive, almost like, full like, 
clown on, on Afro, that. Yeah. I, I, I'm kind of sad that he's done that. You know, I feel like you need you need that kind of style and ego to go up against the player. Like, I don't look. I'm fishing for things here. I'm just sad he's cut his hair, Joe. <laughs> well, you know, he, he's cut his hair. Let's hope that it's not a playoff beard situation where you cut the beard and yeah, lose not the all power your strength. Yeah, Samson or something. I, <laughs> yeah. I do think it's a decent segue though that I think we should talk about Aki here coming into the series because he's up against Milky Way. This is going to be a tough series. We already talked in the previous series. You know, you and I were casting an IP versus. WE. And one of the big conversations was Aki being on the same page as his team. So this is a player that sometimes goes a little bit too deep and doesn't necessarily have to support the rest of the squad. If he does that against FPX, like Milky Way is an incredibly intelligent jungler. The second you make a misstep, he is going to open the game wide. For sure. Um, you know, I keep referring back to this this one line which Lyric came out with in the regular season. It was like, look, you're not on OMG from last year anymore. People aren't just going to follow you regardless of when you push your, push your go buttons. This isn't that kind of team anymore. Now, they can be that kind of team in the right situation, but you just have to be on the same page um, as you were saying there. You know, um, for Shanji and Aki, oh, a fun fact about this too, uh, Shanji continuing his streak with Aki of every single game that Aki uh, Shanji has played in the LPL has been with Aki as his duo. <laughs> Those two, I think as a top jungle, have been on the same page. Yep. But it's just integrating that with the bot side of the map. This all, I, I've had high expectations for the ninjas. I really thought coming into this year, um, they could be verging on a top four, top five team around that. They have that kind of pedigree, but they need to make the pieces click. And that's something which FPX have done so well on the other side. Sometimes it does take a big series for that to happen. Sometimes yep. something can just change. You know, um, particularly BLG last year. You know, they came into playoffs off a of regular season and they made that huge run and, and became a truly elite team throughout 2023. NIP, I don't know exactly what kind of fire they need to be forged in to overcome some of the issues, particularly in the late game, particularly with Cohesion as a team. Might take some Phoenix fire. It may well take some Phoenix fire. We'll see if they can... I was going to say rise through the ashes. They've not burnt yet. <laughs> they're still, not quite. They're still they're flying singed. for the time being. Yeah, they're still flying. Let's see if they can fly on stage today. I'm just excited for this playoffs story to begin. And I feel like this is a clash where, you know, if FBX were coming out on the other side of the bracket, maybe it'd be a little less exciting. The fact that we do have these, like, two hero figures for the teams just makes this so exciting for me. I'm looking towards that top lane as well. Shanji versus Shaolahu. Could be a matchup where th there's potential weaknesses to be exposed there in the 1v1. Same in the bottom lane as well. Vota Control, Doctum and Life, both have had really great series. They've also had series where they've shown weakness. Perhaps exploitable strategies here coming out from both teams. That's a very good point to bring up because Shallow, who plays a lot of duelists and he does play for individual lane pressure, but he doesn't always end up crushing that lane, particularly in the same way that someone like Wayward does. Now, Shanji kind of split the difference a little bit with Wayward. I do think that Wayward outplayed him across the entirety of the series, but Shanji, you know, against Shallow, who, if he can have himself a strong series and I'm not going to say redeem himself, that's too strong of a statement to say, but have a better series than he did in the last round. Um, yeah. That could really open up some options for NIP. We know what he's like when he starts getting ahead of the game. It's worth mentioning as well, just, you know, we're obviously looming closer towards the draft. Uh, Rumble is a big pick for both yeah. teams. Shanji loves the Rumble. We all know Shanji loves the Rumble. Rumble is also life's most played support of this, like, that as a statement is just unheard of. He's got an 85% win rate over seven games. So well, 85.7 <laughs> to be specific, but like his most played support being Rumble across an entire split is just crazy, but he's such a flexible player. But that Rumble really has been key for both teams. I wouldn't be surprised if it's banned all series. I think given how it's been played in, in pretty much every series so far and uh, Basically, nothing answers it in a top lane matchup. I think that life has shown that basically nothing matches it in a bot lane matchup. Yes, why would you let that champion through? That would be bad. Um, you know, I think that realistically for the side of NIP, if they're on red side, you're either looking to leave Rumble and another power pick up. I mean, champions like the Maokai have been very powerful across LPL playoffs as a whole. I don't know whether that will be necessary for these teams today. I think that FPX, um, they don't need the Maokai as a crutch. I think other teams do. 
uh, because it is easy, non-committal engage. You throw it out from range, you don't have, don't have to throw your body into the play as well. Like a team like LNG or, of course, Weibo. Uh, I, I really think that team should never get Maokai again uh, because it smooths over the cracks of some teams that need that help initiated. I don't think FPX need that. NIP, they've been playing actually, honestly, more around Rookie being on stuff like the Talia to do that. So for NIP on red side, I think they're banning away more stuff like the Rumble, the Ash for Doc down as well, and of course the Kindred. I think if they're on red side, those picks kind of go pretty much hand in hand. Whereas on the other side, I think really, really if they're, uh, the Rumble is open, I think you've got to ban that away, and then you start targeting stuff like the Talia as well. See what bans are going to come on through. I am excited to see it. And you know, this is the conversation of ASOL too. Care famously oh, an ASOL yeah, player. The, the rookie dragon showing us. It's been popping up around <laughs> the world, but we've got two ASOL players on the server potentially yeah. today. Yone as well, a shared pick between these two players. Ari, a shared pick between these two players. Oh, yeah. Like Care and Rookie, honestly, reasonably similar champion pools and both very flexible. So, uh, yeah, I, I kind of like did a bit of a thought experiment about who I thought the five best Ari players are in the world right now. By the way, Care is actually on that list. This guy is insane at Ari, but Rookie just so happens to be even better than him because he <laughs> might just be second, third, even first. This guy is really good. Look, either way, they're on the short list. And the fact that that's in the conversation means that actually, if you're a red side team in this conversation, it becomes a very weird uh, set of calculations to figure out what you can get. Now, of course, Azir is back enabled. Kerr is a big player of that champion too and is playing that um, for a lot of the early split when that was enabled. Maybe he just slams that in as a blind pick when that's um, available to them. And I'm really wondering what the blind picks will be in this series. There are some picks, like, you know, we said about the Rumble, and I think the Ari applies to both these champions, uh, champion um, pools in the mid lane too. Um, but y I wonder, particularly as we get later into the series, whether these blind picks are going to be exploited. For instance, we've seen a lot of blind pick Renekton. That cannot be allowed to happen. This champion needs to be counted. And I think when we're getting to this level in the LPL playoffs, that's when the question really starts to become quite prominent because yeah. these teams are the ones which know their stuff. Yeah, I feel like the prior four best of fives have been the LPL rediscovering what the meta is going to be since Azir came back and all of that. And now the rest of the bracket is perfecting that fact. I mean, another another factor is down in the bottom lane, right? We've seen Jinx really rising to priority, Zeri coming back through a bit more virus again yesterday, but these scaling AD carries very much being on top. But Senna, I think, is a, a carry that not only is, I think, very good in the current meta, especially if you want to play with a strong top side, things like the Rumble, for example, or you have a carry in the jungle, <laughs> Milky Way. Hmm, um, who plays those? Senna becomes an incredibly valuable pick. Doctum, it's his most played over the entire split, but he's up against Photic today. Photic's like the best to ever do it on Senna, or at least one of, you know, like Photic is renowned around the world for how good yeah. he is on this Senna. So I love his melee really range Senna. Uh, I love how he just just goes in with a blast cone into the enemy team on Senna. <laughs> that was it's Rookie. Favorite part. That wasn't him. Rookie betrayed <laughs> him. How can you pin that on Photic? Because he's just the he's just the goat. What are you talking about? He's just the goat on Senna. He can survive melee range. Senna. Well, true. He did somehow get out of that situation. I'm not entirely sure how. But yeah, I think it's because everyone matchup. was just as surprised as he was. Um, I think it was like, a, oh, I shouldn't be here. Flashes out. Everyone just forgets about that for a little while. That was one of my favorite moments from the free. Maybe we should have put a highlight from that in. That would have been really funny to revisit. Yeah. Maybe it would rookie, be a bit hard. Rookie uh, yeah. Blascone's Photic in, nearly loses the series for himself, <laughs> and then uh, immediately gets a quadra kill to redeem himself on the ASL. Yeah. So, you know, swings and roundabouts, swings and roundabouts. This should be a good one, though. Honestly, I'm excited. I will say, I think one of the biggest uh, matchups as well is going to be Joel uh, versus Life. I think Life has had an exceptional split. I think Life. I think the conversation in the community is starting to come around to the fact that Milky Way isn't just on his own. Like, Life is another yeah. really, really big name within this roster. And especially, like, his Alistair game against Kanavi, where he's denying the Lee Sin getting oh, onto huge. Doctum. Yeah. Um, obviously, his Maokai when he interrupted the recalls right at the very start of the split. Um, he, he's had some big highlight moments, but he's been very consistent as well. Whereas on the opposite side, Joel, for me... He's been caught out a few too many times. He's been mispositioned a few too many times and punished for that. I really do worry for Joel in this series because he's against a very decisive team. And let's see how decisive they are as we head into our first draft of round three of LPL playoffs. Okay, so NIP on the blue side, that means the FTX, what are they going to start target banning? 
currently, Ari's still up on the table. That was permanently banned versus NIP in the series versus uh, WE just before this. And with just the bans on the table, we are going to get one of potentially Rumble or Ash going through the draft for FPX. But of course, that could also be very powerful for NIP with the Nico taken away too, which of course is a, a bit of a flex pick across mid and support. We are actually getting a lot of the picks which we talked about up and available. There is, of course, a couple of target bans in there, particularly that Slayer and the Kindred. But a lot of what we've been talking about is still available. So the Rumble take it off of the board in the end. But like you say, a lot of comfort available. Things like the Ari potentially first pickable. Obviously, all of these scaling AD carries have pretty much made it through. Only Varus being banned away in that regard. Obviously, the target ban towards Milky Way with Kindred. But we've seen he's more than happy to play multiple different characters. We've seen a load of the Jacks. We've seen the Zinzao, the Lee Sin. We've seen the Graves. Oh, Even the yes. Viego. And there we go. First pick, Ari for Rookie. Oh man, I love watching this guy play Ari. He is genuinely one of the best Ari players of all time to do it. So very excited to see how he does it. Of course, Cap, um, he plays a couple of situational counters into the Ari. He plays stuff like the Vega. Um, I'd be interested to see if he's picked up, you know, um, a couple of other picks. I haven't loved his Annie as a counter into that one. So he might go back towards something, um, you know, like a Karma instead, just to try and bully the mountain lane in a step. Okay, it's Cat. Azir's back. He's gone back towards that Azir. <laughs> I will say, compared to other mages, Azir can suffer a little bit more into the Ari. You don't struggle, you don't kind of push lane as hard against them or chunk them out as hard as something like an Orianna or a Victor even can do against that Ari. And oh, we have an oh. early pick Twitch. Let's change the conversation. This has been banned away from a few teams, locked in very early for FPX. This is exciting. First time Doctor's going to be playing at this split. My goodness, bit of stealth, bit of cheese, if you will, coming in from <laughs> FBX. An aggressive start, and Twitch completely changes the way that you got to play League of Legends. Right, okay, Twitch is effectively an assassin in bot lane if he gets to get off vision and get himself some clean resets. If you have strong laning phase, though, from NIP, you can just pin Twitch into lane pretty much from the start of the game, and he never gets to play things. So, um, what are you going to do as NIP to stop... Dr. Hammond Life using this Twitch to great advantage to get across the map. The problem is, Photo can draw. I mean, I really almost wonder if they should have gone towards something like Illusion instead. Go towards Illusion and just bully this guy out, and if Twitch ever shows up, you just gun him down with your own culling. Instead, going for that Rakan Nocturne to reach him as a mid game answer, but I'm worried about the early game. NIP essentially just committing to full dive at this point, but you're already up against an Azir that can do well. To try and peel for those AD carries. I wonder what FPX go for here, because honestly, you could answer with something like we've talked a lot about the Maokai. It does mean that you'd be giving Maokai to Milky Way. You don't really want him on Maokai. You want him on a carry. It is going to be the time Kench for life to try and protect Dogdom. Okay, so um, you have double long range backline with a Tom Kench to protect them. And on the side of NIP, not a great amount of tank killing right now. So whereas, you know, if you pick like big mages into um, into the Tom Kench and someone like a Varus is an AD carry, then the Tom Kench can't really be a frontline because those champions kill tanks too well. With Varus gone, with Ari currently, you know, um, locked in at the mid lane, not being that great at killing tanks and would rather itemize towards assassinating one of these carries. I think Life has a really good opportunity to protect his carries and be a really hard um, block to remove on this side. FDX, they want to remove some of the scaling AD carries now, I think. Maybe even ban out Jinx as their second one around, even though Jinx can suffer into the Twitch uh, in terms of Twitch just being able to pop out and assassinate them. That honestly could be part of the plan, right? Is allow that Jinx over and try and find the matchup. One thing I will say for Twitch, obviously we always talk... I say we always talk, we never see Twitch, but <laughs> conversations of Twitch We have often... one game of it from <laughs> OMG. <laughs> They're often about like the assassination in lane, right? And rightly so. But one thing that's also worth mentioning is he's also a great team fight AD carry. That ultimate, especially if you get a hurricane, just absolutely shreds through teams. And there's a huge amount of AOE team fight damage here for FPX. So in the late game, certainly no slouches, but bans on towards Milky Way here with the Lee Sin gone. And now that Jack's taken off the board as well. Yeah, it's just these these picks from jungle, which needs to buy a lot of space. It wouldn't surprise me to see him go for a Shinzan out, just again be someone who's pretty good at anti-dive, weirdly, because um, you kind of dive into him, and you just kind of, if he's not the target, he then kind of gets to reach the person diving in and uh, be a really big damage threat, pop that ultimate, and be a temporary front line, which means that if NIP do go in with the Nocturne or the Ari, they can kind of uh, walk into a bit of a bulwark in this Shinzan in the jungle. He's hovering it, he locks it in, wants to be playing a bit of a front line now. 
for his backline carries, that's pretty obvious on that side. NIP, now with the Jinx and the Zeri, it would make sense to go towards the Zyra Khan. What I will say though, is that again, if you get jumped by the Twitch, and Twitch starts hitting you with a W, um, you know, to get that slow onto you, you do get your ult pop very, very quickly. You need to be very aware of where that Twitch is going to be, so it wouldn't surprise you if they do lock it in, but you have to pay respect to where this Twitch can pop up. Shanji gonna go for this Renekton again? It's something we have consistently seen from him. And it's something that in the previous series, you and I weren't a particular fan of. Much more preferred him on the counter picks. Obviously on the blue side, there's only so much room to counter pick when the enemy team just doesn't pick their top laner. And we've got a Tristana as okay. the final lock in for that bottom lane alongside Photic. Aggression. Shala, who's gonna go for his one trick? I, I really do like um, that Tristana coming in for Photic because, as I was saying with the, with the Zaya, if you sit there and you get tagged by a Twitch W or something like that, you're popping your ult very, very easily. Now with Tristana, if Twitch jumps out at you, you jump at him and you squit, you, you splat the rap and you try your best to fire back with uh, all guns blazing. So, um, I like the aggression coming out of NRP's draft. I think that if FPX show in bad positions where Shallowhu or Life are not there to save care or dock them on their various carries, the ability to jump forwards, every single member of NIP is going to be gunning for the first person out of position and they have the tools to do it. FBX, they need to start uh, achieving vision control, use that to get Dockdown into the right place and remove some of these big ultimates and maybe some of those lives of NIP members. I think a lot of this game is going to be on Dockdown, honestly, because Twitch, often a champion that can thrive in being in quote-unquote the wrong position, right, and catching people off guard. But he's up against a competition that is extremely good at punishing you for being in one of those compromised positions. Perhaps we'll see some situations where he ends up going one for one. I don't know how he's going to play it, but I am excited to see it. Doctor, in a game of main characters with Milky Way and Rookie on the server, picks up Twitch and steals some of the limelight for himself. So, we did say that this game, uh, this is where, really, a lot of the challenge begins in LPL. The difference between top six and the rest of the bracket was really pronounced in a regular season. Will that hold coming into playoffs proper? Well, we'll have to see on the rift. But as things stand, FX have come out with some more firepower and some more innovation to throw an IP for a loop. Let's see if it's going to be enough. FPX starting with quite an interesting composition. Zin's out for Milky Way. But Ari has... Well, Ari? <laughs> Rookie has that Ari. It says a lot <laughs> that thing. you can interchange those names, doesn't it? Full dive here from the side of NIP. And you know it's going to be fun to watch. It's time to get into game number one of our third round of LPL playoffs. I just want to remind everyone of the stakes here. This is still single elimination. It's seed four versus seed five. Rookie is coming in as an underdog, which you wouldn't expect against this roster, but FBX have just proven everyone wrong this year. Milky Way especially, but the rest of the team stepping up as well. And it feels like now this is what it's all led to. They're in playoffs. They're in a best of five, but just three losses and either of these teams goes home this is what it's all led to and uh in terms of starting things off on the right foot fdx have shown themselves um innovation here Dockdam has picked so many different ad carries in this split one of the most versatile bot laners in the lpl as you can see that they're trying to hold uh, hide themselves in this bush right now and try and drop that minion aggro if it's all possible they are going to lose push against the tristana almost certainly uh because it's the explosive shot at level one really need to see how Dam finds himself onto fog of war and just kind of pop out of that with that ambush of that q going invisible getting the extra attack speed i really think as this game goes on the more kind of pockets of vision that each team can create for themselves the better this game will go for them rookie also been um a real assassin on this Ari. He's not played it for backline. He's not played it for uh, kind of just looking for the charm through the front of a team fight. He will be looking for the same pockets that Dockdam is. So looking now for that master of the mid lane for NIP 
to once again throw people for a loop with one of his very best champions. Rookie going to be setting out some of those mouse traps <laughs> to try <laughs> and catch this rat. Let's see if they can across the course of this game. I want to quickly talk about this Tom Kench as well for life because obviously makes sense as a pick alongside this Twitch, saving him later on in the team fights against this dive composition. But it's also the first time life is playing Tom Kench this entire split. He's played center support twice and he hasn't played the Tom Kench a single time. Um, and part of that, I think, is because it's a takeaway from Joel. We saw Joel playing Tom Kench a couple of times uh, in the most recent series, but a bunch of times across the course of the split. Does feel like not only a good pick for FPX, but a bit of a takeaway from NIP as well, forcing them into a style of composition that we only saw once in that best of five against WE. See that draw uh, managing to use the fact that Twitch can't control lane early to just hang around mid lane. Now, we saw Rookie have a couple of times against WE basically being sat in a 1v3 lane or, you know, sometimes a 3v3 lane. But this is what happens now that we've lost a lot of the Varus and Callista priority for some of these teams. They're not always the Callista pickers, these two teams. Um, it means that. Um, Particularly with things like Varus Band, you're not going to have like this lane lock on bot side. Draw looking to make plays early, catching out life potentially. Bit of damage out from Aki, but there's not really that much follow up. Doctum charging into the mix as Aki the target. Milky Way dives forward, exhaust, knock up, damage is there, and first blood already. Milky Way starting strong against NIP. How could we forget to talk about in the early game the jungler which starts? things off Milky Way yeah we can talk about a twitch we can talk about the mid game assassinations in the early game Milky Way is the assassin and once again he finds himself into an early 3v2 on the bot side of the map or rather a 3v3 rather and Aki loses flash loses his life will now be slower to kind of get himself towards that level six as well as he's been denied a little bit of that um, XP from um, that scuttle crab on the bot side I imagine he's gonna get the top side though soon he'll be recovering that one fine but you know draw he's been really trying to make big plays in this early game but it is just a knock-up onto the time catch it's not a multi-person knock-up and it's not while everyone else is following up whereas when FPX go in as they find the engage, all of the damage comes through it's, very quickly. It's also just a weird play to make, right? Photic was still level two as they go in for that one. You know Milky Way's going to be on the bottom side. You had a ward on his Raptors when he was taking them, so you know his pathing is matching you. But I don't really see the angle that NIP saw themselves. Life could be in trouble, though. Maybe this is the angle. The follow-up on the next play. Chuo grabs the kill with Ignite. Well, if it doesn't work the first time, try, try it again. A thumbs up from Photic, as he knows that was a good play in that one. Um, yeah, I mean, the thing about the Rakan is that you can make the play because you can get in and you can get out. And of course, against the Tom Kench as well, um, you can quite, you can get caught off guard by actually the amount of damage that Rakan has early, hitting those, uh, those Qs early and hitting those Ws with Ignite involved, particularly with your engage range, can really, really help. So Grub Snapping started. On the top side of the map, Dragon not been the focus. It's been more about the fights that it will be split. Oh no. Maybe two <laughs> currently for NIP. <laughs> Aki just slams up the emote, manages to just steal one of the uh, grubs away, pretty much for free. There, that was cheeky. That means Milky Way walks away with just a singular grub. Got a replay on the bottom. I, I love this on the on the. Oh, we, well, the replay goes as I was about to talk <laughs> about it. I was gonna say, Joel holds onto his W for a long time so that life can't just deep water dive because he knows it'll be interrupted. Yeah. And uh, now we get ourselves back into bot side of the river. Um, Dragon is up, of course. Rookie, important note. It's a big thing with Ari players. Um, has bought up the Dark Seal early. If there is early kill participation, and Ari is likely to get kill participation if a fight starts, that means you can kind of start taking off even more with the extra AP in pocket. The triple tonic, you also have that extra ability to pop that tonic of um, Wrath, I think it is. Look, it's, it's one of the tonics. The one which gives you extra damage. So really look now for NIP to pull the trigger uh, decisively at the level 6 mark. Get Rookie into the game. If he gets ahead of the game, Care and Dogdam need to position so, so differently. That's why FPX have been quite slow about the way that they approach this river. Double control wards. They don't want to have big vision onto them from Aki and Rookie and potential for Shanji to... Well, I mean, he can't teleport down in this case, but really just ways to NIP to get into the backline. Yeah. They're slowly going towards the Dragon. Care pushes the wave in. Dogdam pushes the wave in. Milky Way, like you say, the double control wards down. Knows that there's no vision. And a nice little Drake setup here for FPX off the back of early lane presence. On the opposite side, though, Shanji has been pushing in this entire time. The wave now actually pushing towards him. I don't know if he'll want to. I mean, typically we we quite often just see our top laners just shoving into tower if they have the ability to. Trying to get those plates. He's got that demolish on the Renekton as well. 
but it means that Aki now has presence on this top side. That's where Aki's got to play through, and he's hit that level six mark. And now we have to see whether Shanji and Rookie can combo up with him. Right now, as it stands, if Aki goes forwards, of course, he won't win something like a straight 1v1. Not against the level 6 Jin Sao. That one's uh, a little bit hard in that sense. He can give it a good shot, but it does kind of feel like huge charge. Oh, Milky Way might be a little bit careful He's here. going for it. He's got half of his health already. Milky Way, the man of the moment, but Aki's taking him on in a 1v1, and he's winning it! He slays the legend, brings the stars out of the sky! Okay, you know what? I'm gonna take the L on that one because Milky Way takes the L. Aki straight 1v1. Maybe Milky Way could have gone across to uh, the Krugs at the top side, used the W to hop over the wall, but Aki had his ult to follow up and the lethal tempo fully stacked up. So, big moment there. Early kill for Aki, and that means that FPX lose control on the top side. Two wards immediately put down onto the top side jungle of FPX, and that's gonna start curtailing their ability oh, to get no. charm onto Kat. Kat, good. Flash the shield comes out. The Empress Divide isn't enough, and Rookie finds a kill with the help of Drop. Oh, and he picks up two Dark Seal stacks, doesn't even need a team fight, just finds it himself. Charm onto the Azir. We did say, look, you know, the Azir is okay into the Ari, but it's not quite the same level of laning phase as other mages into that champion. Rookie abuses that. He has been a laning specialist. Great stats from him across the split so far, and another great kill. It's him. just permanent fighting in this game as Photic is exhausted. Dogtum flashes forward, it means he's knocked up, but Photic is solo. Dogtum solo, one more auto, but the rat escapes. And life now chasing that poison on the floor. Fotic gets around it. Oh, everybody's solo, but nobody quite goes down. Oh, my word. Draw. I think he missed a Q in there. I think if he hits a Q, he kills Dogdam. Just can't quite land that one skill shot. Dogdam lives to tell uh, another tale, I suppose. Milky Way on bot side has flash. Potentially could um, for something there, but I don't know if you're wise to that one. They don't overstate. They're going to get themselves a reset. So, with all of this permanent fighting, um, I really want to, again, focus on something that we highlighted a lot between NIP and W, which is how many wards have left over from the other side of the suit. Because you know that Milky Way won't be in mid lane, you very e it's very easy for you to jump forward like this, lands a great charm, has the ignite from draw as well. I mean, Ari doesn't bring ignite in this game, it's always going to be that teleport, but with the extra help from the support, an easy kill gets Rookie unlocked from lane yeah. on arguably his best champion. And one of the me things to mention as well is, while Rookie doesn't have ignite, he did have that damage tonic, which sort of functions a little bit like if you think all the way yeah, back to like one, season yeah. two when you'd have Riven starting with the red elixir top as well as health potions and you kind of have it as that all-in tool you saw rookie proc it just at the very start of that trade in the replay and it gives him that extra bit of damage and honestly that was just a tiny bit of damage away from care getting away without that tonic i don't think he gets the kill yeah, it's one of those thin margins of error, and you really need to play those if you are playing Snowball Champions. You look at NIP's draft, it is a snowball draft. If they do get ahead of the game, this game gets very hard for FTX. It's going to be a lot of work from Life and Shallow here to make sure their carries aren't just continually getting feasted on by NIP. Problem is, it's too early in the game for FTX to move away from three lanes. Now, we do have Grubs going off the side of NIP. That's going to be a problem, too, because NIP, they can split the map as wide as they want, and they can have Aki or Rookie or Dro roaming to one play from that after pushing out lanes. So, already, giving over an early lead like this to NIP, FTX need to be very careful about how they play the next three, four, five minutes and make sure that the next round of ultimates from NIP doesn't just explode them and lead to these five Grubs taking a full tower. See if they can get those opportunities. NIP, though, this has been a class early game so far from them. It feels like they've read what Milky Way wanted to do. Feels like Rookie has been playing well. I mean, Aki getting a solo kill on Milky Way. It's all led to a 2,000 gold lead. And like you say, five grubs to work with as well. When Shanji's had prio top this whole time, Rookie has been working well in that mid lane as well, getting advantages against Care. And you got to remember as well that this is Care, like... With Azir being unavailable for half the split, Azir is still Care's most picked champion. At 11 picks, their next one is Nico at six. Like, it's still almost double as much Azir as any other champion for Care across the course of this split, mm. with Azir not even being available for half of it. So it says a lot about how much, how much comfort he gets from this Azir pick. It's still rookie Zari, though. It doesn't matter how comfortable he is, he's still falling behind. 
I am actually very surprised that the Ari was let through without a choice counter coming in from Kerr. Uh, you know, the Azir is one of those picks where you say, I will eventually outscale you if you don't make, make big plays. Um, it's Rookie. He's going to make big plays, so we need to keep an eye on that one. Kerr eventually will get to the point where he'll take over in terms of damage per, uh, you know, damage per second. That's definitely going to be the de definitely going to be the case. But no, Rookie's going to come back with Malignant's first item uh, builds up. Very, very ready to accelerate the game. One of the most important yeah. things to do with a composition like this. Dragon started up, multiple angles being hovered over here from NIP. Epics needs to be very careful about the They're battle lines. For this one, Rookie stepping forwards. First items on all junglers mids and 80 carries. Aki pops the ultimate. Rookie dives in as well. Double knock up is there. And Milky Way's gone again. NIP, a masterclass of an early game. But Care wants to make a stop to it. Fox Fox none of it. Dives on in to get into the action. But a TP now coming on through. Shala who joins into the mix, but Shanji's beaten him to the punch. It's the top lane difference here as Shanji now has gone too far. Rookie with a charm denies any kind of escape from Shala who one more auto is not quite enough. The solo laners get away, but NIP, they're demolishing FPX. Oh man, NIP, their early games have been truly destructive when they find their angles. Got to say on the other side though, FPX, I mean, we're calling it out pretty comprehensively here on Cast. You need to be careful of the next round of ultimates leading into this fight. They group up, they get a recall from the top laner, but he's not there for the fight. A miscommunication. Milky Way can't be the front line, dies before he gets to pop his ult as well. The early damage coming in from Ari, who's already started Snowball, means that you can't play around your front line as easily. They are evaporated before you can play things through correctly. And even after this point, you know, they overstep yet again. Not a great team fight from FPX, despite the fact that we've been talking them up as a full comprehensive team. This one's a pretty slept walked fight, really. They just kind of knew this would happen, I feel. FBX being challenged here. And now, we're in game number one, but we already have to talk about tenacity. We have to talk about, I'm not talking about the statistic here, I'm talking about <laughs> the ability to make things happen in the game you're losing. Well, <laughs> Foti controls to certainly want to make things happen. But Milky Way has been a player that's been able to get back into games from behind. But typically that's been his team being behind, as opposed to him being behind individually. So far, Aki's had his number. Maybe Shanji's got Scare's number as well. He messed up the dash and has to use his ultimate to keep himself from dying to Shanji. Ah, oh, Kerr, not a great first game. Uh, really don't know what this Azir is going to do now that they have to play on side lanes and, you know, blowing ults like that. It's going to be a big, big issue. Uh, and, you know, the, the, the problem with losing this dragon fight so comprehensively from the side of FPX is that you have so much vision in your jungle that FPX cannot play safely like this. They're just going to die if they know Care's got no ultimate. Forces the flash out from him. Cost Chuo's flash, and now life is moving over as well. Milky Way's here. Doctum stealthing into the area, but they decide not to pull the trigger in the end. Oh man, you know what? Super clutch from Milky Way. You know, we, we didn't, he didn't have a great last team fight, but that double knockback from that ultimate stops Shanji and Juo getting onto that prime target. It means that FPX don't end up getting uh, smashed through that bot side of the map. FPX very nearly turned that around to a big macro yeah. play too. As soon as that play happened, you saw Dokdam running down with the ambush as well on the Twitch. Uh, one of the things about champions like Twitch, I guess this also applies to, you know, Zeri and Kai'Sa more visibly, but Twitch moves across the map really quickly when he starts popping yeah, his he Q. Does. So if FPX can get themselves like a big turnaround play like that, where Dogdam can turn up to the play first, NIP, despite the fact they have great power right now, need to be aware of that. They certainly do, but I will say for NIP, they've been doing a good job on that awareness so far. Like Milky Way spent a lot of the early game down towards that bottom lane. Photic and Draw played very respectfully. Despite being on Rakan Tristana, uh, they, they played very respectfully of the potential ganks from Milky Way. And we see Shanji and Draw in a similar position there, escaping before the answer could come through. And Aki has been the benefactor of all of that. The fact that he was able to get five grubs in the early game, the fact that he just waltzes in and takes the Herald as well. Like it, it does feel like NIP have respected this bot side pressure from FBX and have been getting so much elsewhere on the map in the meantime. And um, one of those things in terms of getting stuff on the map, and again, it's not like the most like flashy part of it, it's that ward right there from Draw. It's walking into the enemy jungle and saying, well, um, by the time Twitch starts pressing Q, we know where he is. It's the big thing about Twitch and Evelyn. I mean, funnily enough, both those champions were meta all the way back 10 years ago. Shala, who tries to get a big oh, play here, gets the no. drag back. It's a big pick onto Joel. That's the engage tool for NIP. Herald comes in in the mid lane, but will not finish the tower. Potential opportunity here because Care is up top. 
Oh, TP coming out from Shanji. Rookie's Rookie. on his way to the top side as well. Care, you've got to get out of dodge, but he's got no tower to get to. Ultimate already used, but Rookie's coming. And the fighting mid lane. his ultimate, and in the meantime, Doctum's gone down. Charmlands as well as Care falls at the top side. NIP strike back. Despite the fact that this was an initial pick from Fun Plus Phoenix, they can't secure the map again. They need to be so careful of these ultimates, and they're being disrespectful. Care, Dogdam, not for the first time, making some individual oopsies in this one. And NIP pounce yet again. Now three kills on Rookie's Ari, seven stacks on the Dark Seal. He's effectively getting to the point where he's going to have a free, needlessly large rod in inventory because he's bought up this very cheap item in the early game and has been... Um, the beneficiary of that one. Now NLP walking towards Shallow, who on the bot side. There's no there's no real ability to bail him out here, I don't think. What a Nocturne comp's gonna. It's catching people out on the side lane. What a Shallow, who and Care doing? Getting caught out on the side lane time and time again. FPX are being picked apart. And this is as Dragon spawns as well. So it's not even like FPX have a cross map for an objective. Of course, it wouldn't even be a cross map. It would be on the same side of it. FPX have been really sucker punched by this one. I feel like they've um, not respected the combo enough. Another charm in mid lane. Rookie pulls that ultimate. And again, just continually going forward and shunking out. Now there's no way that FPX can defend their mid lane turret, you have to imagine. If that charm hits with uh, with Joel there, you just know it's going to be a dive. Obviously, life did have that devour available, but... You know, when Rookie charges forward on Ari, <laughs> I'd never count any potential uh, result out of the equation. Doctor uses, uses his own ultimate there just to try and wave defend wave. the tower, yeah. It's just wave clear. Gets chunked down to half HP, but effectively that's Rookie trading his ult for Doc Dam's ult in the large scheme of things, but of course he has the malignants. What happens here? This is while the top lane play is happening. I mean, it's just an overstay. It, you can't be stood there. You, you, the Twitch needs to be jumping onto people, which you know where they already are. That is way too far up. You are not yeah. safe as a Twitch in that position. I think part of that as well is like, life was nearby. He was in the deep water dive animation. And during that animation, his Twitch goes from 100 to zero. Part of it is just <laughs> not really respecting it quite how fast Fotik and Aki could one shot this rat. And particularly now with um, the Navori Quick Blades being built up from Photic as well. Um, one of the underrated things about this item on Tristana is that if you use a bomb and a wave or a turret, the more you auto-attack minions, the quicker your thing comes back up again. Milky Way chunked out once more. But Photic, just going to have continual mobility from lower W cooldown, from lower bomb cooldown as well to keep yourself really high presence on the map. Mid lane turret has fallen down. And I have to say, with mid lane turret down, I really struggle to see a way that FPX can claw their way back into this one. NIP have continually forced the pressure forward. Shala, who now going to walk into two people on bot side, not going to die this time. Um, there is, however, a conversation about NIP closing out games. They have had big leads before and almost throw them. They almost yes. threw a 15,000 gold lead in their last series versus WE. They would love to, uh, to not do that here, Joe. I don't know if it was... It wasn't this comp, though, was it? In the NIP series, when they ran this dive comp, this was, I think, their cleanest game of the series, right? Where they kind of mm. just... I think this was game two of the series, and they sort of just stomped things. This looked good. They were able to snowball well. They do have a 7,000 gold lead. I do agree, though. There were some question marks across that <laughs> series of what NIP were bringing. One thing I will say, though, props to NIP. They literally played another best of five just two days ago, and yet they feel like they have come in fully prepped. It feels oh, like man. there has been so much work on how is Milky Way going to play this early game? We're going to play around it. Uh, Rookie is in a really dangerous spot. Again, of all the best Ari players in the world, this is the thing which Rookie is specialized at. Finding that pocket of vision and doing his one-man army picks on the side. He's done it versus some very big players in this split. Care, he's walking into it again. Oh. Rookie has been here for a million years. Oh, he's the not job. going for Care. He's going for Dogdom instead, but he's forced away this time around. Aki's gone deep for this one. Exhaust popped, but there's the damage. Dogdom down and Another charm. charmed as well. Fotik dives into the mix and sets up for a second. Shalahu all out onto Rookie. One spirit rush remains, and with a flash, he gets out to safety. Rookie is unbelievable. Oh, this guy just takes matters into his own hands, and NIP will clean up another kill potential to Shala, who no, he lives just about. Baron up on the cards, though, and if anyone can do it, it's Rookie on this Ari. Milky Way may be an all-star, but Rookie is the all-star. NIP take control of the game.
Yeah, maybe taking the, the Galactic Prodigy uh, down to earth a little bit. As Rookie, again, this is his specialty on Ari. Of all the best Ari players in the world, he's the one that finds the flanking angle like this out of Fog of War. He uses vision control really masterfully on this champion. And then the fact that he ends up, you know, buying the Devour very early and then manages to use a second charm later into the fight to threaten the other carry. What do you do against this guy on this champion? I really feel like the Ari has to be banned away from him the rest of this series. There is a reason it was permanently banned against WE. And I have to say, the Azir from Care has not looked good today. He has been caught out of position. He's not been able to get any damage out during these fights. And, you know, going in towards the draft of Game 2, because that's where I feel we're at at this point. We are looking towards Game 2 for FBX. You have to wonder, like, A, that... The lack of Ari priority from the, or like not respecting it, not banning it in the first way. But, but then there's the Talia ban that they had to go for. There's the Nautilus ban. There's the Rumble ban. It's like, what do you get rid of instead? Yeah. It's a tough one. But if cares on that Ari, it feels like it can be good for them. But I don't think they can let Rookie have it again. Mm. Well, this is another thing as well, which is that Cat does play some different champions which can threaten the Ori. You know, I don't think that Vega is bad into Ori. I wouldn't call it straight up a counter, but it's stuff like that. You know, he plays the Annie, but that's been less successful. So then you start going down this list and saying, well, okay, Cat, what have you got to answer this? If this is going to be just a one game to try out, if they can just not worry about the Ori and just play towards, you know, their, their strong 5v5 team fighting. Um, then obviously this has been a failed experiment. I really need to see now, if they're leaving this up, you need to have an actual solid counter to it to stop Rookie getting out onto the map. You cannot allow him to leave lane on stuff like Ari or the Talia. It's the same issue across multiple champions. So if they change it coming into the second game, really, really impressive first game though from NIP. Not just in terms of like, you know, this early game has been immaculate, they're stacking drakes and all of that, but look at the speed at which they've snowballed this a 9,000 going up in 23 minutes that is a kind of ridiculous lead to have and when you're running a nocturne composition often the conversation does become like did you snowball or did you not snowball right they definitely snowballed this is a game that they can kind of just run forwards the question will be what can fbx do about it i'm not sure there'll be much of an answer two items finished on doctum though when we get two items on care, they do start to have a bit more team fight power, but they do need some mistakes from NIP. Oh, they do. Um, but the thing is, it's very hard to force those mistakes now. So Rookie's going for the Crypt Bloom third, and, you know, while that might not be optimal damage onto the back line, it adds more damage onto some of the frontline champions now, with, you know, Mercury's treads being built up across multiple champions, and it also gives you even more cooldown reduction, and that's the big part of this point. Now, if FBX are forcing mistakes, how do you do that when the Ari has, like, a 50-second cooldown on the ultimate? You know, that's going to get to that kind of point now, and it's not even level 16 yet. When you get to that point, worth noting that the count countdown starts at the start of your ult, cast as well. Rookie is basically going to have zero ult cooldown. Even if they force it here, he can probably ult out to safety. See that FPS? They can't even find the angle. But even if they did, it's probably just an ult and out. And then he gets that back so quickly. How do FPX approach to try to shut down these side lanes? I don't see an answer for this. I'm curious how the uh, strategy will develop over this series. Because FPX, remember, they had side selection. They're the higher seed coming into this one. They chose to be on the red side. Didn't deem this Ari to be enough of a potential issue. And uh, I think they've uh, regretted that decision at this yeah, point. a little bit. Just I a do, little, yeah. I do wonder, though, like, they'll have side selection for the first three games. Here we go! Never mind! Dwell going in for the all-in. Rookie's there to follow it up, but the damage isn't actually done just yet, and it's Dwell to go down. Nice start for FPX. Shanji was nowhere near the plate. Oh, the charm lands, and Votic can follow it up! No! Life! What a blunder! Oh, just as you thought FPX got themselves a clean one for none, it just is not allowed by Rookie. He's going to go back, he's going to teleport back into the play as well. And again, that ultimate, very low cooldown. So FPX, if they take long enough time, that's going to be a problem for them as well. Teleport back in, and here comes the fight. Dogdom has that ultimate available. Twitch is opening fire, but Shanji's onto the backline care, trying to peel for Dogdom, but Shanji's in a 2v1, and the rest of the fight is already won. Care can't finish the job as Dogdom is on the wrong side of the world, and Juo is here to remind him of that fact. That'll be the last death knell of FPX here in game number one as NIP grab Baron. Splat goes the rat and NIP 
they have absolutely demolished Fun Plus Phoenix in this game. It's going to be a very clean Baron for them. Then the Baron buff will tie it over to the Mountain Soul as well. FPX, they are continually being asked the question, how do you overcome this pick combo from NIP? And they have been left really wanting with their answers. More items built up, got three items completed from Rookie. He is so, so strong. Not to mention that Photic, of course, he's not necessarily been the main character in this game, but he has been a hell of a carry nonetheless. In another game where Rookie wasn't a factor, he still would have been a difference maker, but Rookie is the one finding the charms again on the front end of the fight. Shrog does go too far. Rookie has a bit more ability to get out in this one as he has a, well, I mean, actually, no, Rakan should have that ability. He dies anyway. I mean, it's very lucky for them that they get themselves a pick after this point through, once again, Rookie's army. I think Chuo might have been relying on Rookie there. He was like trying to <laughs> dash out, and Rookie dashed out uh, and sort of abandoned him. Shanji just putting so much threat on the carries in this one, meaning it's such a one sided fight on the top side. Photic just pumping out damage on this Tristana. I feel like people often think of Tristana as an assassin. you got to remember, this is still a three item crit AD carry in those yep. team fights. Tristana will just annihilate you. And particularly with the item itemization buffs as well to Lord Dominic's regards and Navori, some extra armor pens, some extra AD. Just makes that even more potent compared to previous patches. We have a Seekers now on Rookie. He has himself an extra luxury defensive item. Shanji going towards likely Guardian's Angel as well now. It really is. And here comes the ult again. It gets so low cooldown. You can use this. Look for an opportunistic charm. It's not actually a big cooldown to waste right now with so much cooldown reduction and level 16 in pocket. Just go watch that icon as it goes on cooldown here. It's going to be like half up already. It's going to be very quick for that one to come back up. There we go. You can see, look at the speed. Look, look at, at it. the speed. It's ticking down on the left of your screen. Okay. It's, he uh, has so much absurd. cooldown reduction. <laughs> it's already half gone. I mean, that's got to be, what, like a 20-second cooldown? That is absurd. And now, care Almost gets one shot. Life saves him. Fotix busts the shot. Very close to doing the job there. But that's going to open up this mid in him now. Rookie has that he ultimate goes again. available again. And just dives on in. Everything's on cooldown now for FBX. And it means there's not really any way for them to deny this dive. Shanji happy to be the front line. There's Shala who is cut down where he stands. And NIP, what an entrance into this series. After a dicey best of five versus WE, they come in against FPX and they show FPX what they are made of. Game number one ending in a quadra kill for voting. Domination from NIP. We said it might take some Phoenix Fire to forge this team. And it looks like the iron is uh, at melting point right now, reforging themselves. NIP, I really, really love how they played out the snowball of this game. There were no worries about not closing out that game, which we've had with some other compositions where they've had dive comps but couldn't quite close things off. And so much of this comes down to how Rookie plays this Ari. Yeah. He just finds such a good pace to play the game. He finds the players at the right moment. He's not over-forcing it like some other Aries do. He's not being too passive like some other Aries do, where you're waiting for other people to start the play. He finds things on the right timing. He's very rarely caught out, and it really felt like Apex cannot let this go through again. He's just too damn good at the pick. I'll be amazed if he gets Ari again this series, honestly, after that performance. Aki as well. Fun like Phenomenal performance on that Nocturne. Across the board, NIP impressing in our first game. This is single elimination at this point remember loser of this series goes home and fbx have to fight back in game number two right after this break
Welcome back, everybody, to the LPL. I'm Munch. I'm joined by Nymera as we head towards game number two already because that was a fast game number one from NIP. Dismantling FBX in the first game. Oh, oh my word. What a game from Rookie. Um, I think there are three players in the conversation for the best RE in the world right now. I think that's Knight, I think that's Chovy, and I think that's Rookie. There is no player in the world which plays around Fog of War the way that Rookie does. We have seen him assassinate consistently, carries in late game time after time. It starts in the early game. He's the best laning player in the LPL in the mid lane for a lot of different champions right now, it feels. And once again, it felt like, um, you know, you managed to get some early advances, this time with a little bit of the help from Draw. I don't think Hare had a great game on the other side of it. You cannot afford to have weak laning games versus Rookie. He runs over games like this. And he continues to push the, po um, push the pace of the game forward. This guy is just absolutely unstoppable on this pick. Some of these fights are just beautiful to watch. And it's it's later on when he's uh, trying to play assassination within the jungle. That was the, the, I think, the biggest one for me. But like getting kills during the laning phase as well, like just just dominating the entire yeah. game. Aki do, do you as think well. I could get him to sign my Ari poster down there? Do you reckon, <laughs> do you reckon I could get him to do <laughs> that? Try. That you would be a dream try. come true. <laughs> I don't I don't know if he's in Nottingham at the moment. Oh, you don't live here anymore. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if he's in Berlin at the moment. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see if we can hook you up. But I want to talk about Aki as well, because I think Aki did a really, really good job of shutting down Milky Way. I feel like the whole team came in with a clear game plan of how they were going to play around Milky Way. I, like, I don't want Rookie's insane performance on this RE to overshadow the fact that Aki yeah. solo killed Milky Way that game. Yeah, and also, you know, um, despite the fact that he was caught out in a couple of team fights, similar shout out to Draw. Um, what you will remember from that game is him dying in that one team fight around Baron. What you will not remember is him putting down consistently three wards in the enemy jungle on cooldown. Like, how do you play as a, as a Shinza who, where every single camp is seen? Every time that Dogdown wants to walk forwards and ambush into the game, he is seen. You just can't play like that. It really did feel like. Um, Aki and Zhuo massively just controlled the map. I think it was helped by the fact that Rookie got that early kill in mid lane with the help of Zhuo. As soon as the map was set up, it was unplayable for FPX. And next game, you need to see them pick some lanes which can contest a little heavier and allow themselves not just get blown out in terms of vision control and map control. I think one of the the kind of saddest things that we got here is we were so excited for this Twitch pick. Twitch got locked in for game number one of a best of five. And we basically stopped talking about it immediately because it just never did anything across the course of this game. The Tom Kench takeaway as well didn't really feel like it had yeah. much of an impact. Definitely back to the drawing board for FPX. But I, I also think just get a carry in Milky Way's hands. I want to see a Jax. I want to see a Graves. I want to see something where he has more individual impact. Well, he's uh, he's not getting Kindred. I can give you no, that he's much. Not. <laughs> uh, he's not getting that one. So um, now I wonder whether we will change sides for this game or whether um, you know we'll have another crack at red side on the side of Fun plus Phoenix. I mean, they didn't necessarily have the best uh, run of things in terms of first picks in Milky Way. That prodigy on your screen. Looks like he's in contemplation a little bit. Kind of have to be after the game one, but himself. the thing is, <laughs> the thing is, right? I think FBX, you know, credit to them. Um, they have been a tenacious team. They have been a team which has come back from very difficult scenarios. I mean, the big series we have to point to that one and kind of um, uh, bullet point out is the top esports series from regular season, where they went for three games and third game they even fell behind in that game and they had to win three backdoor. This is not a team which has necessarily crumbled under the slightest bit of pressure. Game one was not the slightest bit of pressure. It was a hell of a lot of it, and it isn't your most important games of the split so far. But I am expecting another strategy to come out from this team. I think one of the storylines we've not really brought up on the broadcast just yet, as we get into game two here, is uh, the battle for the Platinum Hair. Photic and Milky Way, both, both rocking the Platinum look, coming into the series. <laughs> Only one of them walks away with the Platinum locks. I've... I don't know if they've actually made a bet. I really hope they have. I seriously doubt that they have. But, you know, maybe one of them loses the right to the planet. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll move on. Anyway, Champ Select is about to get underway. Thank God, because it'll mean that I stop rambling and we start talking about League of Legends. It's actually the Renekton band away, as well as Ari and Talia. Double. Pure target bans. Double blue side mid lane bans towards Rookie. Uh, especially since Care is a player of the Ari, that, that is telling. The fact that Care says, like, I am an Ari player, but I will not first pick it, whereas Rookie will. 
that is just such a big strategic victory for NIP. Now, Rumble is left open. That is almost certainly a lock-in for the side of FDX. Now, NIP, what do they go towards? They don't have the R in the clear. They have the two picks of Rookie gets out of lane with most often. With the Ash ban, it could potentially be something like a Callista down there to try and contest, try and deny the Callista alongside the Rumble. I don't know, though, if you really want to go for an aggressive lane against this Rumble, you might just lose anyway. You could go for the Senna Nautilus. That's another thing, too. Nautilus is unbanned. But if you go towards um, Azir Nautilus, that's a pretty strong 1-2 opening. Uh, I think that would work pretty well. It means that um, Photo can draw, they can play towards a couple of things. You can also go towards Varus, maybe, as well, and hold on to your support pick a little later. But I think that, you know, on the whole, NIP are very happy with this 1-2. They have good long-range DPS. I feel like the Varus can definitely put up a fight in laning phase as well. I would expect either Jungler or Nautilus on 3. Let's see. I'm, I'm curious if FPX are going to go full aggression, like dive style with this Rumble locked in. Um, obviously, we've seen Life playing a ton of the Rumble across the course of the split. You expect that to be Rumble support, believe it or not. For anyone that doesn't know FPX, that's where we're at. And hence, the Gnar lock in early on and there's that Callista we were talking about it's not something that Doctum has played a lot across the course of the split but it leans into that aggression alongside the rumble yeah it, I mean it is worth saying Doctor has not played an awful lot of well I say he's not played an awful lot of anything in the sense that he plays one thing and then he moves on to another champion he just keeps going that's not less we expect on three but now Doctor he has played just an insane amount of champions compared to other AD carries in this split and you know a good seven eight of them have only got one game on them each this will be the second game for the Callista in 2024 it is going to be up against that um Varus Nautilus though it is a very strong laning duo Callista Rumble they can both be very strong in their own way level one epoch very uh, very strong but I really feel like Photo Control have the better yeah. duo between the two champions I just want to talk about that Dog Dub point for a second there um the number of champions played by Dog Dub this split 17 as an AD carry main, Gogdam has played 17 different champions in that role. So it's, there's no wonder he's not got ah, many people games say on the each. bot that is stale. He's got more about? AD. <laughs> he's got more champions played in the the bot lane role. I can't even say AD carry because he's been playing things like Swain, right? But um, he's got more games played there, more different champions played than like LCS players have games played at the split. It's an absurd <laughs> amount of games and an absurd amount of different champions. Uh, locked in by Dogdom there. Sejuani, though, banned away from Aki. Remember, that was the champion where he smote the Elder Dragon in Game 5 against WE. Certainly a champion that worked for them in pressuring the top side. Poppy going to be removed as well. Four jungle bans in the second half of this draft. Milky Way has not really been given that much priority in draft. He's been given a little bit of time to sit on his picks. Now there is every chance to go back towards something like Shinsao as well. And Shanji, um, seeing the top lane matchup goes to the Uder into the Gnar. Now the Gnar very much can bully you as mini Gnar in mid game, but you don't get wave control early. And that means that likely you're having pushing bot pushing top lane against you. So Milky Way is likely, uh, you know, looking for a champion that can survive, potentially having um, some jungle attention with him. He can't go for something that's too weak early. You know, Lee Sin does come in. He is an absolute master of this champion. He certainly is. Care is an ASOL player historically, one of the few until recently, and uh, suddenly it's become a little bit flavor of the month, hasn't it? Could be a second blue champion here locked in for FPX, leading to a full house of blue versus orange champions. Um, certainly would leave, lend them a little bit of scaling Game. coming out of the mid lane. And it gives you some extra range as well. It gives you that DPS, gives you the ability to help with the Wombo. Now suddenly you have, uh, you know, the Falling Star or the Skies Descend into that Equalizer. You have, you know, um, Milky Way and Shala who can sometimes add on to that combo as well. So NIP, they need to be very careful about what pockets they sit in in the team fight because if suddenly the Varus and the Azir are hit by one of those ultimates, everything else goes to hell alongside it. NIP, last pick jungler, it's gonna be Aki's Vibe. Now this is a champion which he's had a lot of success on, but also some of his worst moments have also come yeah. on this champion too, because he needs to be on the same page as his team when he goes in. Luckily, do you have an Azir that can sweep forward? Do you have a Nautilus that can follow you as well? But if you choose your target wrong, and particularly with the ultimates on the other side, you are going to get punished if you overstep. I do worry a little bit about that because, like you say, we've seen some of the biggest oversteps, not just from Aki, but in general, come on this fight, right? Like, it's very easy to play around Vi ulting you. You flash backwards if you've got a dash, you use that as well. Like, suddenly Vi could find herself in very compromised positions 
and suddenly you're the one being picked instead of getting the pick yourself. We'll see if Aki can find his moments. He's been given counter pick against Milky Way. He had Milky Way's number in the first game of this series. Will he get it again though? With the swap of sides, perhaps things can change for FPX coming into game two. FTX, they need to dig a little deeper. They're a bit tenacious. Show that tenacity, not the stat, as we've been saying. It's the mindset. Because NIP, they have swung hard in the first one. An assassination of game one from the ninjas. Lives up to their name. But the Phoenix, they are definitely known for a rebirth or two. Didn't expect to be doing this early into the series, but still, a lot on their plate now. NIP have come to play. I just realized that while Varus, the champion he's playing, does have Platinum Hair, Photic has actually got rid of his Platinum Hair. So, turns out oh. Milky Way won that matchup after all. But unfortunately, he didn't win the first matchup in this series. We're on to the rift for game number two here between FBX and NIP. <laughs> We've got some great artists in our audience, as always. A little, little picture of Rookie there. Now, I want to quickly talk about this mid lane matchup. We've got Aesol coming in. You know, Azir is kind of the classic scaling mid laner. He's up against Aesol, which is the even scaling mid laner. Rookie just got a quadra kill in the last game against WE on this champion. But Care, one of the first to do it. He's been playing Aesol for a while. He has, and he's occasionally pulled out this pick again. He played, I think, just once in this year. Yes, last year he was playing it too in some more clutch moments. Um, and the thing is, both of these champions weirdly share a lot of archetypes. You know, they're actually quite mobile for scaling mages. They have good wave clear, which you expect from scaling mages. But they have that big teamfight ultimate to bring to bear as well. Now, it is worth saying that Rookie is going to be more consistent for him to find those moments because um, you don't have to wait for your Stardust to stack up. And he'll have a little bit more lane pressure on the other side of it too. But Cap, with the ability to cross walls with that W and then reset the W mid-fight as well, can have some really high potential fights should things start going their way well. I'm thinking about starting things going well. Shandy getting some vision into the enemy jungle to make sure that Milky Way is not uncontested in how he paths around the map. That's a good start. There he is. There's uh, Ken. Just starts burning Rookie alive. Rookie might just get forced out of the lane. Remember how one-sided the first game was in Rookie's favor. Now almost forced out of the lane. Oh man, Rookie went for the Hail of Blades for early trades too. It gets absolutely demolished at the level one. So now we see bot side. Uh, we see that Dog Diamond Life getting control over the early wave and um, getting some good poke with that E from the Rumble. Very, very important for them too. So FPX firing well in the early lane. That's what we wanted to see. We talked about Care as an ASOL player. It's worth mentioning, he's not actually got that much ASOL in his history. But uh, his KDA over all of his games is almost 11. <laughs> so that's pretty <laughs> good. It's pretty good. And now he's going in on Rookie once again. That's two procs. Aki's here, but he's on a ward, so Care will be safe. Rookie barely surviving this laning phase. Yeah, it has to call Aki over to help out his laning phase. Uh, by the way, folks, I mean, one of the best ways you get Stardust Wait is now Shanji pops that ghost. He got Turtle Stance. He's fine on that one. Gets out after just blowing that ghost. But um, the thing about Asol nowadays is that you don't just stall and farm up minions for your stacks. The best way to get it is by procking your Q on champions. Not only is this good for trading in lane, it gives Cat a lot of Stardust very early into the game, which is not that great to hear for it, I fear. It means that his first big ult will come online a little earlier. It's great to hear, though, for those who want the Banger series today. And I count myself among that number. Rookie only level two. So he hits three mid-trade there. He was two levels down and Kev very happy to capitalize. So, um, again, we, we talked about this the last time we saw this when Rookie was playing it. The big change to Asol, and we don't see it that much, so maybe some people didn't know this anyway, but it used to be about maxing your E second, the little pool on the singularity on the floor, and you kill minions within the singularity to get that status. With changes to Asol, basically they buffed his numbers in terms of his Q, which is all of his damage pretty much, gets even more damage when you are flying. And that amount of damage increases with the W rank. So now what you do, since it's been upgraded again, is you max your W second and you just become a battle breath spewing dragon um, to put out really big DPS and get yourself involved in a lot of these trades a little earlier. So let's talk junglers for a second here as Milky Way moves to his Raptors for the second time, I believe. He's got his uh, crab done. Aki doing the same on the opposite. And dropping a deep ward before going for his reset there. 
Obviously, he is one or two camps behind there. Milky Way having a slight advantage. They're having that advantage, but what can he do to get into lanes? It's helped that, you know, Care, Doc Down, and Life have all won their, land, their lanes very handily. Shallow, who, you know, he's not pushing up in this top side, and that means that NRP will get some top side vision. So Milky Way needs to find some entrances around the bot side, if at all possible. We've got Grub spawning, we have Dragon spawning, Milky Way heading towards top side will mean that he's looking to take some of those, uh, at least one Grub out of that first couple. Sometimes what Lee Sin will do is just take the first one, because he's very quick at killing it, but Shanji's now walking beyond turret, he's found him uh, in a good position here. Just spot Milky Way on the ward, but can he escape with his life is the question. Life has moved over, speak it off, and Shanji will go down. That's going to be first blood, and it's Shala who to take it. And while this is happening, NIP are not quick enough to get towards the dragon on the bot side. So, I mean, FEX, they get a complete freebie after Shanji misreads the map. It's all well and good when you see all of these, you know, funny proxy waves happening from top laners. You have to have good information to do that. And Shanji just misjudges things, goes down very easily. I mean, it's perfect timing for Milky Way. The ward comes out from Shanji literally as Milky Way is stood there on the opposite side of the wall. It's literally a jump scare <laughs> for Shanji at that point. <laughs> Ward in the back of the pit here for FPX. So if Anki starts this up, full information available for FPX. And immediately Milky Way moves to the area. Has himself a level advantage too. Care low HP. Aki does have a key flash, so Ken needs to be a little bit careful here, but Milky Way is the stronger of the two jungles right now. <laughs> and he knows it. He absolutely knows it. Just flies on in. As Care has just dinged level six. So ultimate available for him as he just looks to clear this wave away, deny the potential threat. So. Milky Way hanging around in this mid lane. Care going to uh, just be soaking up this wave as fast as possible. Needs to be a little bit careful. Uh, took a bit of a bad trade there. And I think NIP, um, you know, if they can get themselves one of these grubs or a couple of them, they're very happy with that. I think that the fact that Udi can run past the Gnar and hit that tower is very important. It means that actually the grubs are easy to use. I think that the LPL has struggled to find out um, like intuitive ways to use the grubs. Some teams have used them better than others. Obviously, it's very easy to use six grubs, and we don't rarely see that. We don't often see that, rather. Um, but when you have someone like a Demolisher who did, that just run past your tower, uses the Demolish on it as well, it's much easier to use that. So NIP getting themselves an important top side objective there. Yeah, I think the most uh, regular use we see is the mid lane Tristanas as well, can just annihilate towers. But it's FBX annihilating a Drake here, trading those first three grubs for the neutral objective on the bottom side, and obviously the strength that they have during this laning phase with the Callista alongside the Rumble uh, is terrifying. Life almost hitting that level six mark, and that is a big moment. There's not many supports where it's like, okay, level six, now it's time to go. But Rumble support is very much among that number. Absolutely good. Whoa. Shuffle under the turret, though. Tower shot, is that enough? Alt for disengage. Gets him out alive, but not healthily so. Rookie has flash as well. He wants to try and get more aggressive, but Milky Way's in the area. Rookie's going to be cautious not to overstep here. Q onto the way. Rookie forced to flash, but Milky Way didn't even use his own. So nice patience there not to overforce. Okay, so Rookie managing to claw himself back in a little bit more, but still flash blown from... Uh, Rookie is a little bit of a danger point. He's gone for that Hail of Blades for early lane pressure, but he's not really managed to get anything done against Care. That's still a worry. The fact that Care can scale into this game, get himself a lot of Stardust. It's a bit of a worry. Again, um, the thing is, the more Stardust you get on Assault, there's a lot of bonus to it. You know, your ult gets bigger, you get more damage from pretty much everything in your kit as well. So it's very, very dangerous for NIP to be giving Care such an easy early game here, but they can't overforce onto him. Maybe they can force onto topside and a mini now. That uh, is, like you say, a mini Nar. Milky Way, I don't think he spotted Aki. He's nearby, but he'll be too late on the play. All in comes through. And Aki finds a kill. Q lands from Milky Way. He is not letting them get away with anything this game. Dashes forwards to deny the escape from Aki. Still has that Dragon's Rage. Milky Way. Oh, the smite! 2v1! And he kicks him away. Shanji denied. Milky Way finds revenge. There's a Star Forger in the mid lane, and there's a Star Forger in the jungle. Milky Way, the Q smite to get the kill. Classy mechanics. 101 on the Lee Sin, and he has turned up to play in this top side. Important take back there. Means that NIP don't get to just walk away with a free play on top side, and Shanji can't just push in the wave for free. Might not be able to push out this wave at all. Life is still on top side, and now he has left himself in a 3v1. Oh, Shanji. Minion wave isn't quite underneath the tower. I'm not sure it's going to matter, Milky Way. 
walks away. Okay, yeah, I wasn't sure if that last tower shot was going for him then. Nice repeat play on the top side from FPX. And they'll grab themselves so many plays off the back of it too. Very well, so really important players on the top side of the map. You know, we talked about how important it is for Udi to be pushing up waves and using these grubs because he's so powerful at using Demolish on towers against stuff like the mini Um Not able to do that in this point. Some good gold back the other side. Means that FTX's top side of the map is sitting pretty. On the bot lane as well, it's not like both the control have managed to um, do that much against Doc Damned Life. We called out the Varus and the Nautilus as a strong laning phase here. Not really been able to do that much. This is a clean combo on the turret here just first. And the problem is, uh, you don't have the flash or the ult now to stop Milky Way just doing whatever he wants. I love how Milky Way again stops out this Q and then he waits for the shield to come up and oh, we're back into a 2v2. Hang on, all in on the bottom side. Milky Way's got himself another kill already. That'll be two. A double kill at the bottom side. Milky Way is pissed off about game number one. We did say that FPX were a team that have withstood a lot of pressure in regular season games before. And they're coming back well in game two. Yeah. The fight starts in top side as well. Chala, who's about to turn mega, he's threatening onto Shanji here. Really good trade for him on the back side of the play. The problem is the sustain that Udi is bringing to that top lane. But Aki now moving up as well. Shala, who has that flash available, but he's about to turn into Mininar. Aki has his own ultimate. There's no minion wave, luckily, for Shaolahu. So he's going to put down a ward. Sees the control water, realizes he's probably in a little bit of trouble. Diving under this turret without the flash from Aki. Still a little bit dangerous, though. Doesn't have himself that first item. He is very far behind Milky Way now. Whenever Lee Sin is on his side of the map, on his screen, he's probably losing that play. Okay, going to be a good value here. Comet comes down. Chuo chunked out pretty heavily. Just about gets out of range. Life, no ultimate available for him. And Milky Way moves up now to try and contest these grubs. It's already four grubs for NIP. That's nine across the series as they've got five in the first one as well. Milky Way will be able to answer with two for himself. So not all is lost on that top side when it comes to the grubs. So Dragon spawning in 30 seconds. Uh, we've largely been fighting around top side of the map. Haven't really seen that many bot side fights. Of course, we saw that the double kill earlier, but still mainly the focus has been about Top side of the map, so trying to shift things over now means that FX do not have the vision control on the bot side if they want to go towards that. They already have themselves first dragon though. If you want to let that one go, they're safe to do so. We're gonna go see the start of that bot side flash. That is a sick reaction from Doctor. That is insane. Pulls forward the rumble to make sure he can get into the play. Yes, Callista dies, but by managing to get life into the play, it opens up the double setup after that point. Honestly, that could have gone so much worse for them. Could go bad here. Rookie dives in, Dogdom's no flash this time around, and Rookie turns the play. Life gets out to safety, but Milky Way just dives oh. in, and what shots Rookie? This man is unstoppable, but Aki wants to stop him anyway. The CC chain is too much. It, it turns out he's extremely stoppable. Yeah. <laughs> Turns out the unstoppable force, it, it, it does actually meet something which can stop it eventually. Change that moniker a little bit. And now the problem is Milky Way gave a huge shutdown over to Photic on the Varus. That's going to fuel him through to two items much quicker now than Darktam, who's died two times in quick succession. FPX, we did say that they didn't necessarily have the best setup around the bot side of the map because they've been focusing on top side. NIP finding themselves an important moment in that game to get themselves into uh, this once again. Dogtown goes beyond the wave, tries to outplay the Lethality Virus and just says, okay, if I get my lethal tempo stacked up, I win this. And that's true, but then you get the teleports coming through as well and it's not a true uh, 1v1 or 2v2. Rookie gets out of lane. How much have we talked about this player being such a, a big strategist for the team? Milky Way, yes, gets a great kill onto him back, but it is not an even trade. He overstays at this point in a 2v3, and giving the shutdown over does not make this an even trade. Certainly doesn't. Second Drake as well for FPX. They've got themselves one and a half thousand gold lead. And I'd be certainly not out of the running just yet. They've got and it's here that's scaling up towards the later stages of the game. They've got a virus as well. It's certainly not over, but it's a great start for FBX. And it's good to see them having a great start after how one-sided that first game of the series was. But look at life scoreline. I think we need to focus a little bit on this player as well because he has been roaming around the map. He's been helping make these plays possible. His equalizer, as well as jumping in with Dog Dam's ultimate, set up a lot of what was happening in that bottom side. And you can see that he's almost maxed out that E. That's very important, by the way, folks. Um, Rumble E gives you that magic resist shred. And when it's overheated, it gives you a lot of magic resist shred. Now, suddenly, if you hit two E's on someone, 
Then Asol comes around the corner with that Skies Descend. They are going to just turn into Stardust themselves. So, like, really, really big ability to impact the game, even without that Asol on the board. But with that combo involved too, NIP need to be so afraid of getting hit by those Harpoons. Speaking of, <laughs> Juo, yep. <laughs> beating one of those Harpoons immediately. I will just quickly say, Fotig, one and a half items <laughs> on this Varus. Those arrows yep. are going to chunk. That is going to be tough to play into. And NIP know it. One of the big strengths of Lethality Varus is your control of these neutral objectives. It's so hard to push into the amount of poke he brings to the table. Yeah, you don't necessarily kill the objective as fast as on hit, but you kill the enemy champions from a very long way away. FPX have themselves advanced jizz, but they get the Varus ult for free. Costumer Fates call. Gotham is low and chunked. Shanji trying to escape at the top side of them. NIP trying to focus down the Herald instead. Haki is here, gets the spike. Nobody can get onto the eye though. The Comet lands slowing everyone. Is there follow up? Flash forward from Shalahu as Dro gets himself out. Haki dashing away, but the speed is there. Shalahu about to turn Mega. The slow is there from the rock. No flash available. He already used it. Okay, so NIP, they walk away not being able to get the eye. So while they do end up securing it, they don't claim it. So, NIP, that's a sad moment for them. That could have been a big power play for them to shove that um, Herald into mid lane, take that for free. Milky Way now at the end of this play. Rookie's he here. might get jumped up by Rookie. Aki starts it up, still has his own ultimate available, and that's a combo and a half. Milky Way flips the flash, and it's a pick for NIP. NIP managed to pick off Milky Way in their own jungle, and it's another big kill. I mean, the thing with the Lee Sin is that, yes, huge amounts of damage with ability, but you're never unkillable. And NIP, to uh, shut him down there, importantly so, it gives them a bit of a reprieve. Sadly though, at the end of this, I mean, you still don't get the Herald. It's a sad moment for you, and um, it does mean that you're going to be less able to control the map after this point. Again, you can see already very early into the game, being a massive tank shredding threat, if you allow him to just kind of spam that Q on the target over and over. Big, big damage coming back into live now. I think Shalohu and uh, Shanji are fighting again. Oh, this doesn't look good for Shalohu. He's mini -dar. He's not got any of his bar. And he's burnt asunder by Shanji. Life is trying to answer it, but I don't think he can. And that's a hook from Dro as well. Shanji getting back into the mix. The sustain on this here is absurd. The shield comes in. And now Dro has stepped too far. Death charge will get a double knock of the hook. Is not enough. Care answers. Well, I guess we're just fighting for the sake of fighting now, folks. I don't really know what that was over. I think it's just both top laners stat-checking each other. But it's just a map movement after that point to see who can arrive to clean up the play first. Care's going to soak up the side lane. Um, he's going a little bit deep himself, though, and has a W away. Can't cleanly push in towards yeah. that tower. While this is happening, it's very dangerous to split the map against um, a, an Azir who has that Nash's Tooth. He's very, very good at killing towers. And you have the grub buffs on here, too. It's something which I really praise Scout and LNG for playing around a lot as well. As soon as they hit the one item on the Azir, and Rookie's doing the same in this game, you shred towers very effectively to FPX. The next time they go for these cross map kind of plays, don't be surprised if Rookie is answering with like a tower very quickly on the other side of the map. Yeah, he's going to be powerful in that side lane. And Rookie, a player that knows how to play around the side lanes well, too. One thing I will say. This is refreshing. This series is pure chaos. You were saying, like, you don't really know what that previous fight was about. <laughs> I'm here for it. This is the LPL that I know and love. And I feel like a lot of this split, we were robbed of this style of play as LPL fans and viewers. And it's back here with FBX versus NIP. <laughs> Just pure shenanigans, pure chaos, and pure carnage. It's uh, one of my favorite things. It's the gourmet League of Legends compared to your fast food burger. Sometimes <laughs> you just need the calories. See right I'm now, Grubs again. <laughs> That's a good kebab to burger. I like it. Uh, anyway, Grubs for NIP show that again, they can cross map. We talked about that before, but the dragon is spawning. Watch out for those big ultimates. NIP not in river just yet. TP coming on through from Shanji to join his team. Did manage to finish the tower first, now onto the Drake. Remember, FBX already got two of these. NIP up against it, a thousand gold down, but feeling strong enough to contest at very Fair least. Salt. That's a nice ultimate, and the follow up is huge. Milky Way's the one call, but he survived for the time being. And Shallow, who saves the day. Shanji being burnt down by life. The support is a solo laner at this point, as life chases onto Photic as well. The slow is there, but Doctum backs away. FPX once again come out on top. NIP threaten the CC chain, but they can't finish the kill. FPX pouncing. This is the problem when you over-engage into these huge, huge ultimates. NIP do not have 
the stats to overcome the big double ultimates of the ASOL and the Rumble. It's laying out a red carpet in the very worst way for them. It's definitely more of an entrance towards the grave and the cemetery than it is towards any kind of victory lap in this one. They get the initial CC. This is good, but Rookie and Votic are not hitting damage onto him afterwards. And then huge follow-up, particularly Shallow, who saving his jungle there as well. Talk about the big damage with the big CC in return. Absolutely unstoppable. It's a massacre in the river from FBX. Like you say, the red carpet feels welcoming usually, but when a meteor hits it halfway down, suddenly it's not as fun. You know, you don't you don't even want to be in Hollywood anymore at that point. Um, <laughs> FBX, this sort of wombo combo working out for them. I will say, it felt a little overzealous to me from NIP. Rookie only on one item during that fight. Like, it does feel like they are a little bit behind, maybe feeling pressured because they do have that lethality virus. But... <sighs> I think the problem is there is that, you know, if, you're, if you feel like, you know, you're only on the one item from the Azir, and it's even getting worse, by the way, he's going for Magic Pen as a second item, not even going towards something like a Leandris or something like that. Um, you're against the Aesol. Uh, you have huge scaling, even from the support role of the Rumble as well. That's going to be a huge threat. They have a Leandris now at this point. NIP can't just calmly slide into late game. They lose late game in a lot of different scenarios. So they're looking to try and play around, you know, the Vi and the Varus and the Nautilus, which can combo up very well right now. But they need to choose their angles very well. This game does not get that much easier for them. Yeah, it's going to be all about vision, right? Being able to find these picks. Mm. Remember, the Vi was the last pick on red side here for NIP. They gave Aki counter pick. They let him choose his matchup. And Vi was that decision. We've got to see it work out now because Milky Way has had a game and a half, hasn't he? Six, two, and five. After being completely shut out of the first game of the series, it feels like he wanted a little bit of revenge. That early game yeah. was something else. And now we're set up for FBX in this phenomenal mid game where they've got themselves a three and a half thousand gold lead. They've got an ASOL that is scaling that's got a bunch of early gold. It does feel like. Everything working in their favor for the time being. They have control of the game, and not to mention, yep. they've got Dragon Soul in two and a half minutes if they can take that fourth one. They do, and we saw a little pop-up on the side, on the left-hand side. Kerr is at 231 stacks, or just was probably a little bit above that now. What that translates to, in particular, is every tick of that Q, when you get that full ring around them, is doing 7% of your maximum HP. That's alongside the Leandris. That's alongside the base damage. That's alongside your own AP scalings as well. This ASOL is going to absolutely shred the front line of NIP. Now the problem is, you want to finish off this Lee Sin, because actually Milky Way can be a carry in these fights too. If he gets a lead, if he gets a Q on someone, they die. Um, but you also need to focus the uh, the ASOL. You want to try and kill the Rumble before he ults too. How do you do all of that in one team fight? It is very, very difficult. Again. I think you're completely on the money there in terms of it's about vision control. You've got to get yourself these pockets of vision to make sure that you can catch people on the side of a fight before anyone else can follow up if you're here sad as NIP. But that's so difficult because FX are roaming around as a full squad. They don't have to sit on three lanes right now. They're sitting on two, but they do catch someone on the side. Here's a chance for a pick Shallow who just gets eradicated. And that's the pain of playing the NAR when you're not mega. You are absolutely not mega. <laughs> So, I mean, uh, if you walk around as a group, the group is safe. Not if you're alone as a mini not. Mistake there from Shallow, who NIP can claim that vision back, and they can get themselves onto uh, a bit more of a stable footing, maybe for the Dragon Spawn in the Baron. Oh, actually, TP out from Care. Scared that they're going to make a play onto him. I don't know why he's scared, though, because look how many wards are in between NIP at that top lane. There's like six wards they would have to get past before. I'm pretty sure it would have been safe to recall. So why does Shallow walk down here? You're grouping towards top side river. You're going to fog what? Shallow, buddy, you can't be doing that. This is such an important moment. If you are not part of the big group, you cannot be giving your life up like that so easily. So NIP get a real freebie, but it's off of Shallow who making uh, making a bit of a mistake there. It's a bit of an awkward moment. It's not going to be you know the end of the world. We've got a minute until Dragon now. You still have yourself presence in bot side river. Yep. You're into the river first. You're getting mid lane turret. NIP they need to find themselves an opportunistic pick, and it doesn't help that you're missing ults like that. It also is like, it's one of those things where Shalahu got caught out there and, and that's a nice pick for NIP and all of that. But the thing is, like now, the fact that you just got that pick before, FBX are going to be playing extra safe. They're going to be extra aware of the pick potential. They shouldn't be caught on the top. Oh, just that. absolutely railed by Rookie there. That's the power of that Hail of Blades we were talking about before. Yeah, Hail of Blades, two items is here. It's not the Leandries, it's a full Void Staff. He can do that to tanks as well. Here comes Milky Way! Oh, what a kick by Rookie! He just follows through with it. He uses it as his own engage. Care, big meat. 
Ezio, but in the meantime, Fotik's still going. No, he's not. Kashala, who finds him. Fotik assassinates life, and somehow NIP are on top. Milky Way serves Rookie up, and Rookie kicks them all back in. Oh, it's the rookie, this split versus the rookie himself. Yes, it's a kick onto the Izzy, but it puts it right where he wants to be. And NIP somehow clutch out a late game fight. They get a pick on Shallow Hoot to set up some vision in their favor beforehand around the Baron. It allows them to focus on the Dragon. They get themselves the fight. They get themselves a delay on the Soul, and they get themselves a lot of shutdowns too. That's going to be a lot of gold. They don't get the Assault, but they get everyone else. Starts with Milky Way. Honestly, fantastic play on the rookie. Gets him into the right place, but they don't kill him before he goes to shuffle back the AD carry. Great target selection, but you just can't allow Darkdown to get killed like that on the same side. Care himself, very, very lucky to walk away with his life. Milky Way actually surviving alongside on the opposite side of the play as well. The fact that you got this lethality Varus trying to shoot the damage on towards the back line. But either way, <laughs> I mean, the, <laughs> mechanically it looked great for Milky Way, but Rookie just having enough time to get that ultimate off, suddenly it yeah. all turns into disaster. Yeah, doing huge damage across the team with this ASOL as well. I think we can now have like the two stars of each of their teams with a one like highlight oopsie clip. You've got Rookie punting Photic into the team. You've got Milky Way <laughs> delivering a late game. You know, a do I was here, onto his AD carry at half HP. You know, it happens every now and again. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's the way it's gotta be. It's the way it's gotta be. Sometimes you gotta remind your carries who you are and who's in what charge you here, you know? Are you suggesting that we use fear as a means to control our carries? <laughs> well, uh, Clear Love certainly does. Uh, I don't know about the rest of the LPL. Uh, 2,000 gold lead here for FBX as we enter towards the late stages of the mid game here. Three and a half minutes until the next Drake spawns, but Baron very much on the map. Aki trying to get some control here. We'll be able to remove vision from the side of FPX. And that's important. That's the big win condition when we're talking about with NIP. The ability to find these picks if you can deny vision. And you know, it's the thing is, um, and again, it's not always the easiest to appreciate. You can always press your buttons in a good order to get yourself a play. But if the other people know it's coming, it's so hard to pull that off. Vision control has been the bedrock of professional League of Legends for well, pretty much the entire of its existence at this point because of that. FPX, they lost a lot of that vision due to the last couple of plays going against them. They had great dominance on that from just before it. Now, we do need to talk about some item completions coming in just after this too. Now, of course, Edge of Night came in earlier from Photic, makes it harder to find a pick onto him. And now we have Seekers on both of our mid lane carries. Having that one use stasis, particularly when you are looking for um, a big Vi engage, um, big Wombo combo with Lee Sin kicks, it's much harder to pull that off. Yep. FPX, they claim themselves back a bit of vision now, and they try and set themselves up again. It's a bit of a problem as well, because like you say, the stasis available for Rookie, but Edge of Night there as well for Fotic. Like, mm. who are you realistically looking to kick as Milky Way at this point? It's gonna be very difficult to find a good target, unless someone seriously oversteps, unless Fotic has that spell shield down at the time. It could be quite difficult. Aki is getting real cheeky with it. I don't know if this is a 1v1 that he wins, to be honest. He's gonna go in onto Care TP from Rookie as well. The all-in comes on through the blast cone, denied from Care, but he's still there. In the meantime, on Shala, who the rest of the team goes, they baited the other solo laner. He thought he was reinforcements, but captured behind enemy lines. Oh, it's a rearguard action, which is not a heroic sacrifice. It's just a needless one at the end of it. The Blast Cone from Care, I don't think any either team really expected that one, but it separates Care away from the fight, so he can't put damage down later. Aki, crucial play there. And now they get to stay, again, with four grubs, with an Azir, with multiple items hitting towers. Towers just don't exist before this champion. NIP, they get themselves now onto even gold, despite the fact that FPX have had a massive couple of plays earlier into the game to get themselves ahead of it. NIP claw themselves back to even. As we go into this, you know, it's on vision control. Again, it's about the ward, sat on the control ward. He knows he's off the site. Uses the Vi ultimate to get through the knockup from the falling start. And even with the blast coming after that point, Rookie is already there. The problem is here, with this just bluntly, FX not knowing how many people are turning up to the play in time. I'm impressed at how fast NIP got all five players. That I like. I know Avengers Assemble has been a common meme recently <laughs> after the TPs at LEC. That did feel a little bit Avengers Assemble where you've got you know, Shanji was nearby the area, so he runs over as fast as possible. Rookie TPs in, and then Photo Control just sprinting from the mid lane as fast as they possibly can. 
And like you say, gold almost even now. NIP fighting their way back in this second game. Drake up in 30 seconds. It would be sold for FBX if they can get it. I don't know if they have the control anymore, though. Uh, that's the thing. They don't exactly have any vision towards bot side. They just died on bot side. Every time you lose a fight on the side of the map, you're going to give it vision control there too. Milky Way, he's got himself on a flank, but it's so hard for him to play the game now. Lee Sin, definitely a champion that... I don't think it's equal to say um, he falls off in late game. He just gets so much harder to play in late game. He has the damage, but getting onto the right targets is so, so difficult. Milky Way will really need to step up if he wants to have the impact he had earlier in the game. Are one of the beautiful things about the AD carry matchup that you've got as well is Callista doesn't have a, a hope in hell of contesting Lethality Virus Pryo. Interesting use of the Chain of Corruption there, to be honest, as uh, Drake will be finished off. Okay, they're going to try and use the Rend. They're going to try and use the Rend and say, okay, come into us. We have ourselves the big Wombo combat. They have the Skies to send, and they have themselves the Equalizer at rank 2 with a couple of items on top of it as well. NIP going into Fog. Can NIP get Vision here? Ward over the wall, Shanji happy to be the one to face Jake. Care is behind enemy lines here. He's not been spotted just yet and has that Sky's Descend available. They see 5k him. on the Baron, Shanji there to try and zone the Dragon. It's just going to be a 50-50 in the They're flipping it. Aki doesn't get in in time. Baron taken, Rookie puts everyone back into the team. Aki on the byline, but Rookie's going to go down here. Health bar's low as Aki and Joe trying to finish the job. Care is underneath the tower. Shala who's cleaned up the rest. Yeah, Shanji got the Dragon, but that one cost it's gonna be fbx storming back into the game the cost is going to be barren it's gonna be the rest of his team shanji did his job but the rest of the team can't survive they're gonna walk up and crush through at least an inhibitor can they end the game here? There's 30 seconds on the death timers right now, and they've got damage on three different players. In fact, even the AP Rumble will do some serious tower damage as well. That's going to be a mid lane inhib, and FBX call off the push. It's supers, though, in the mid lane, and it's the gold lead back in control of FBX. Yeah, it's just uh, a little too hard to kill through Shanji. You could put that up, you know, that Wingborn Storm down to potentially clear through some of those minions on the tower. Care holding such a knife at the throat of NIP. And because Shanji has to answer to him, he is not there to peel for Rookie and the rest of the team. Rookie does have a, you know, a good sweep there onto multiple members, but it's while there's a load of skill shots at the singularity in front of him. Photic can't walk up, he can't CC there either. Aki's on the other side trying yeah. to flip it. NIP just can't follow up. And like, this is where the lethality virus kind of falls short, right? In a big fight like that, where there's so much CC and AOE thrown around, Photix literally just throwing out a Q every now and then, throws out his ultimate, and then eventually just gets slammed by Shaolau, who there's only so much you can do. Couldn't get into the fight. It means there's just no damage there for NIP. FPX, they need to finish this one out. We talked a lot about NIP's late games. They get themselves back to an even state, but now falling apart a little bit. And you know, I'm not a biased commentator. I love Rookie and I love Milky Way. I'm okay with either of these <laughs> making it through to the next round. But I am very okay with FBX winning this game and putting us even in the series. Yeah, I want to see good League of Legends. And honestly, today, in, this, in the first game, NIP, wonderful snowball. FBX in this second game, you know, they had like one or two clubs, but on the whole, they played very well around the areas of the map they have had control about. This is why I don't just talk about this team being Milky Way and friends or something like that. This team is very good at playing the map. They're actually, you know, through mid-split, well, one of our teams with the best macro in the LPL. Yeah. For a team which has come in with, you know, rookie players, not necessarily the star power that we expected compared to other teams, that is a huge factor. And and the fact that they're winning here in playoffs against NIP in a crucial, very high-pressure scenario on yeah. macro is a very important accolade for them. And I do think one of the conversations that we've really not talked about, because everyone's been talking about Dogdom and Life in terms of like actual on-the-map gameplay mechanics, this kind of thing, but honestly, you've got a couple of absolute veterans coming over from the LCK in Dogdom yeah. and Life. Like, there's a lot of experience for both of these players that they are definitely bringing to this table. Milky Way, obviously, we know a big part of the shot calling too. And then you've got that alongside Kat and Shaola, who, who obviously not rookies this year, but still relatively newer players within the LPL and uh, bring a lot of promise to the table. It does feel like with what we've seen so far, maybe this is a recipe for success. They need to win three games today.
to make it through to the next round of playoffs, to make it into that double elimination. And I know a lot of people at home are torn coming into today, right? Do you cheer for Milky Way and the gang, or do you yeah. cheer for Rookie and the gang? You know, OMG of previous years, building a lot of fans, and Shanji and Aki, a huge part of that story. Even fans of the V5 roster that almost made it to Worlds, right? Rookie, Photic, Juo, pass off that. There's a lot of reasons to follow either of these squads. I know that we've got a very split audience today. Yeah, it's been since 2019 Worlds, Rookie has uh, not seen an international competition. What a story it would be for him to make it through that again. But FPX, they are absolutely no slouches. This is such a compelling story to follow. Dragon, up in 20 seconds. Again, look for the big ultimates. Can an important hook land on someone? Can FPX play around the Assault being a big damage? He's doing about 11% uh -oh. of Axe HP with his Q. Aki, I don't know if he gets out of this one. The Comet comes down. He's trying to find an angle, but the angle has found him instead. And with Aki going down, that should hey. be sold for FBX, but NIP make a run in the mid lane. Again, remember, they have the Varus with a load of lethality and have the Azir with a load of different abilities to hit that tower with four grubs. It's going to be sold going over, but NIP get themselves some gold on the map. And it is only a Chemtech Salt. It's not always going to be the most uh, disastrous one to give over compared to some of the others. At the NIP, they are going to lose themselves in the inner turret though, so again, not even the completely winning out on the tower train. Everyone at home, just relish this. Enjoy this, because this is only game yes. number two. This series has already been so good. I've been loving every second of this. And uh, there's plenty more where this came from. And you still don't even necessarily know who's going to win this one. FBX definitely a heavy favorite at this point. Oh, we've got two AD carries that sort of fall off in the late game. We've got two scaling mid laners and players that really know how to use them. It's all going to be down to star power. It's all going to be down to individual play when it comes down to it. Speaking of that star power, again, just continuing to stack up a death cap on Cat. Oh my word. If this champion gets the free fight, we saw how much damage Aki took from just a couple of procs of that Q. It's yep. nasty. Also worth noting as well, when you're going for the on-hit AD carries, once you get to Terminus and Jack Show, uh, the Jack Show gives you percent resist increases when you've been in combat for a certain amount of time. Terminus gives you a lot of resistances. Dogdam is not going to be as easy a target now, particularly with that th four item core with the on-hit before that built up as well, compared to earlier in the game. Dogdam can be a bit of a battle Callista, jumping forwards in the right moments. Unless you stood in his ear, soldiers, it's yeah. very hard to take down this Callista. Really important to mention, Rookie just reset. He's got a death cap as well. He had the two needlessly large Caps rods for everyone. in his inventory. Not going to commit a TP to get back towards the rest of his team. I wasn't sure if he was just going to TP back in. Instead, moving towards the bottom side of the map in case Care was still going to push. But Care has vanished, and it means Rookie is not going to move down. This feels tense. This feels like this next fight could decide everything. Yeah. So there are a couple of important wards from NIP. One in the middle of mid lane and one going towards Raptors as well. They see Milky Way and they see Care. That means they're fighting. Knock up onto Shaolau who Chua takes a lot of damage for his trouble. That's just going to be an ultimate out. It is, man. See how quickly FPX could um, respond there as well. You saw that little flower thing on the floor. That was the length of Care's W range at this point. The Astral Flight. That increases the Stardust as well. He can respond very, very quickly. NIP, they lose themselves that ultimate on draw, which is an important moment. That Nautilus ult can be very, very crucial for CC chaining one of FPX's important team fighters into death. Certainly can. Worth mentioning Shala who flashing as well on the NAR. Very, very important cooldown to be able to get big five-man ultimate. FPX start the Baron off though. Juo over the wall. We'll be able to get vision in the pit as Rookie gets prio mid. 7k stepping? though. We're just going to burn this through. A red. On the side of FPX. Aki gets in, but he can't get the spider. And now he's stuck in the pit. Doctor can step forwards. Aki will dash out. Keeps himself alive. Minion wave crashing in that mid lane. TP's available for NIP, but the Baron up recalls will go on through. None of them cancelled. Oh my word, that could have been a disaster if they managed to get some, get a straggler at the end of that. We are into the late game now, folks. NIP, they have not typically thrived in the late game. FBX on the other side of it, they actually have. Their late game macro has been very, very good for, again, a team which um, we didn't necessarily know how they would mesh together at the start of the split. Now coming now into particularly this point, NIP, they have struggled in the late game time and time again. They had some decent moments though in WE. They won that game five. Maybe that's... Uh, Monkey, they've shaken off the back at this point. Two minutes until the Elder. Two minutes of Baron buff remaining. So FPX, they can kind of use one to go into the other. Control the map, control the vision. Oh, God. Two and a half minutes till Elder. I think you all remember WE versus NIP game number five. 
it was Aki that found that spike on the Elder, and that secured the series for NIP. Foti, oh! equalizer with a comment on top. The Aegis comes through, but he's burnt anyway. And FBX, long range artillery fire, bringing down the enemy AD carry and flashing forward to find Rookie as well. Nowhere to go for NIP. Care will fall for a stroll. No, he even gets out with his life as well. FBX, what a way to finish the game, styling on NIP and pushing us to an even series. The Phoenix may have fallen in game one, but it is reborn in the second. The Dragon in the mid lane it carries them through to an even series. And it's so good to see that the big opening pick from Life and Care, two of the players that we've been talking about alongside Milky Way. The story has been Milky Way all year long for FBX, but there is more in this roster. Milky Way had an amazing early game. He, had a, he, he played amazingly throughout this series, but the winning play is Care and Life. Fantastic to see it from both of them on their signature picks as well. Unbelievable game number two. We're going to jump into a quick break because I, I just want to get to the third game now. Let's just get through this break as fast as possible <laughs> and get back in the action.
Welcome back, everybody, to the LPL. My name is Multiples. I'm joined by Nymera, and we are blessed today with, I think, one of the very best series we've seen all year so far. And we're only two games in. It's been pure action from start to finish, and I've got a feeling we're going to continue as we started. Now, we knew that the level of play was going to keep raising up and up. I think Care might have been a bit robbed at this one, but yeah, Milky Way on the least sin did have some flashy moments. It's hard not to praise Milky Way. I would just say I would put my vote in for that Aurelian Soul, which really took over the game in so many different points. However, yeah. early game, Milky Way, massive place. I think that's the thing, right? When you look at how this early game went for Milky Way, like literally 1v2ing in the top side against Aki and Shanji off the back of that dive, like didn't miss a Q basically oh. all game. Spikes to be able to find that onto Aki, oh. nearly gets the kill. If he doesn't have his uh, ultimate W available there, uh, maybe it would have been a bonus one. But just like the, the early game presence on this Lee Sim was unbelievable. The fact that in any given game from Milky Way, you would have a series of plays which would be the best career play of many players of yeah. League of Legends is absolutely absurd. 
This is a guy in his first LPL split. He comes up from, you know, Royal Youth in the LDL, and he had a great time there. And his, you know, he had a team which supported him, and it felt like he was a good player. But really, how much could he transfer that without those same supported players playing towards him in the LPL? Well, he has forged a new team to do exactly the same thing, and he can support them at the same time. Fantastic place from him. It's It's been something else to watch, hasn't it? And I'm glad that we got something a little bit more playmaker heavy, playmaker heavy, uh, for him in that of the Lee Sin. Worth mentioning as well, Sin came over from that royal roster as well, from coaching RNG and uh, maybe knowing what Milky Way could bring and, <laughs> and shaping this team around him. Care doing so much damage across this game. And you could see that there was just one moment just before 30 minutes where it felt like NIP were getting back on top of things and closing that gold gap. But FPX made short work of it. And that final play from Life and Care was phenomenal. Yeah, we did that highlight reel. We didn't get Milky Way kicking a, you know, a 2 was here into melee range of his half elf AD We didn't get that one in the highlight reel. We'll, we'll leave that one very uh, uh, auspiciously out of that one. Either way, um, one of the things I've loved about this game and the last game, we were talking about this during the break. Um, I'm not necessarily calling out the rest of the LPL. It's not quite like that, but I feel like this series has been determined by the plays which are winning the game and the expert playmaking, rather than the pressure leading to high profile mistakes. Now that happens in any series, in any region, but I feel like it is the level of play has been so high today. I'm loving it. I hope we get to continue with this. Yeah, honestly, I feel like this series has been fantastic so far. I'm enjoying every second of it. And I'm hoping that it continues as it has started and we get five games of just pure banger from these two teams. And it feels like both of these teams are leaning in that direction honestly like we've had either team having quite an aggressive composition in both games i mean the fact that this second game has both a lethality virus and a callista you compare that to most best of fives in the entire world right now everyone's leaning towards the jinx towards the zeri these scaling 80 carries it's a very different mo in this series so uh, that's a really good point, because earlier in the split, and this will come around to a coherent point, I just need to give some context to this, right? Earlier in the split, I was talking about how Viego fixed a lot of teams that were struggling to play out certain difficult team compositions. Look at you, OMG. Particularly in the LPL. OMG, Weibo as well to an extent too. Um, it meant that they didn't have to have proper objective setup. It meant that they could flub a little bit of their control on the map, but just get one kill on a team fight and that would win. Now, of course, Jinx is doing that right now with the AD carry items as well. I feel like, now Jinx is, it, it's a little more than that. Jinx is a strong champion in general, but Jinx is also there as a crutch for people on teams that don't necessarily know how to cleanly set up fights. So they look for just that first kill into an easy win condition to set up that fight. I am glad that both of these teams have in some ways shown that they don't need that crutch. They can go towards stuff like the, the Nocturne Ari, which can be difficult to play out at points. You need to make sure that you can, um, really hit that combo home. I'm glad that we're seeing stuff like the Lee Sin and the Aurelian Soul, which again yeah. requires great positioning, great early games. There is no crutch here for these teams. They are here, they're standing on their own two feet, and they're showing that they can play some di quite difficult team compositions in part. And the thing is as well, those picks are still available as well. <laughs> like if we get later yeah. in the series, Maybe you're going to change things. Legs, we like it's that, very yeah. possible that we still see these kinds of things. The ASOL certainly a big pick coming into this one, leaning towards that scaling, leaning towards that like sheer late game prowess of a battle mage. We'll see if that continues. Honestly, the one big re reservation I have with this series is that the loser goes home. Why don't we have double a limp for top oh. six at this point? Because my God, these two teams deserve it. Let's get into another champ select. And once again, we start with the respect fans. You gotta ban the Kindred from Milky Way. You gotta ban the Ari from Rookie. I think the Talir as well. So FPX, red side. Found a way here. I mean, the R is the obvious one. Like, again, Rookie on the very, very short list for best Aries in the world. And now, um, I wonder as well, this is a bit of a problem because what happens if you let through the Rumble? We saw it come through for life. Very powerful. Shanji can pick that one up. I'm pretty sure he's happy to first pick that as well. Shallow, who on an individual level, not had the strongest laning phases in this uh, this series. It's one of the worries which I had for FBX. Is that okay? Shanji was kept down by Wayward. Shallow, who has not necessarily been at that level. And that means that they ban away the Rumble away from themselves to an extent with their last ban. Knowing Shanji would just happily instantly go for that one. 
You know, the pike is something that we have seen, especially for life. I don't anticipate that as a B1 pick, but uh, <laughs> still plenty of options. And the Nautilus. Wow, I wonder he's back with the steel chair. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be here for it. I'd absolutely be here for it. But no, Nautilus is going to be our B1. Not too surprising there. Question is, what do FBX want to prioritize nice. here? Could be a top side instead. Uh, I don't know about yeah, blind pick reduction again, folks. On this. Folks! I don't like Blind Pick Renekton. It's okay if you can guarantee Bruiser versus Bruiser. You can't do that. Now, is Shanji going to play? I mean, he might just go for the Kasante because it's Shanji and he knows he can do that. But um, on the bot side of the map, I think FPX have some issues here too because they can't go towards the Varus if there's an eventual center lock in. You can go towards center Nautilus here now as NIP if you want. Yes, that Jinx. We said that um, it can be a bit of a crutch pick. We just play towards that first pick. It is just a strong uh, pick in general though. NIP, you don't have the Varus to put up with the Nautilus, but Zeri is completely fine to scale up alongside him. I jinxed it so hard, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> I jinxed it so incredibly hard talking about Varus <laughs> versus Callista. We now do have the Jinx versus Zeri scaling matchup. Connecting up in that top side, we'll see what NIP are going to go for with this third pick, whether they want to go for a good matchup into the Renekton before the bans come through, yeah. or maybe just something blind in the mid lane. There we go, it is I, going to be Shanji Green out of the right side. Okay, so now you have um, a bit of a quandary here for Thumb Plus Phoenix, which is, hey, we want to kill the first target. The first target is going to regen for a million HP every time they stick their head in the sand. Um, right, how do you kill that first target now? If Shanji gets a lead in laning phase and gets through to two items, and you don't have a big magic damage source in the mid lane, you're going to get a full armor building um, Rek'Sai in that top side, which you can't do that much about. Now, you're probably getting, I think, Azir's going to get a band away in the second round uh, by NAP. I think they want to ban away some of the long range DPS dealers from that back line. I think Shanji can take over the game looking at this draft state right now. You need a big anti tank killer from Cat. Let's see what they end up going for. I will say, I like the Alistair lock in for life. Like we saw, this is sort of the rumblings of a bit of a dive comp from NIP with the, the Nautilus, the Rek'Sai. You could follow up there with an aggressive mid and jungle, and Zeri's more than happy to function in that kind of composition. The Alistair, very good at denying that potential style. It is just still going to be bans towards Milky Way, though, instead of focusing on that mid lane. And that, look at that respect, man. How often do you see Orianna in the game right now? What? It's still rookie, though. You've still got to respect it. And I think the reason they're respecting that is they maybe think, because you were talking about dive comps, I agree, if you lock in Noct and Orianna on 4-5 from True. NIP, that Jinx is dead. So, yeah, I think banning away the Orianna is also banning away from that combo too. It fell off a little bit um, in mid and late split in the LPL. It was a very popular pick early on. And instead, NIP, they say, look, Cat, you can go towards an Azir if you want. We didn't particularly care for it in a, you know, game one. Um, and actually, Milky Way on carries is what we're more worried about. And honestly, that's very valid too. So you get let through the Azir, which is good for the composition, but when you turn the nameplates on, banning out Milky Way as opposed to Care, I think there is some value in that one. Now we have to see, are we going full dive into a Renekton and an Alistair? That can be dangerous, but it does fit the rest of your composition. Let's find out if NIP are going to commit. You can still just play team fight oh, here. Please. Oh, please. Oh, please. There's an Alistair ult to steal. Oh, come on, please. It's Rookie Silas. I would love to see That would be such it. a treat. The Nocturne's being hovered. Are oh, NIP going to commit to the dive composition? You better believe that they are. The Nico's gone. The Oriana is gone. That Silas hovered for a second. I mean, he's got an Alistair. He's got an Azir. He's got a Renekton. There are some great ultimates to steal. I think that Silas fits this composition so well, because if you're going towards low-range compositions, you want to pick something that punishes low-range compositions, which can go forward. It's not the Silas, but it is still going to be a takeaway from Care from that last game. Locked in so Rookie can strut his stuff. It is once again the A-Sol versus Azir in the mid lane. Rookie picking up the dragon. Milky Way given Count a pick once more to choose his matchup. Last time he was the Xin Zhao against Aki's Nocturne. He was solo killed in that first game by Aki. This time around goes with the Lee Sin. A stellar game two on that Lee Sin. Getting the MVP after a dominant early game. He locks that in once again. So some reasonable early strength in that top side with Milky Way on the Lee Sin. Shala Hu on Renekton. This game is largely going to come down to the dive combo as we highlighted very early into this draft. NIP, they do have big, big ultimates to throw into the play from mid and jungle particularly the Nautilus being on the CC chain as well. However, on the other side, life on the Alistair can absolutely tear this combo apart. You can stop that dive combo being uh, particularly effective. You have a Lee Sin kick. You have Renekton who's going to be putting his ultimate on and just kind of getting all those empowered abilities too. I really feel like 
Um, this dive composition from NIP needs to be expertly played. If you do not kill your primary target on the dive, there's a lot of extra champions which can take that blood back for that price paid. This is going to be another fun game. It's going to be another one down to the wire. These teamfight executions are really what I have my eyes on. I feel like we're set up for an insane late game once more, just like the previous game. I hope we still get that early action. But with the Lee Sin in the hands of Milky Way, I feel slightly assured that that will happen. We'll have to wait and see as we head towards the rift. Tensions are high. It's one apiece. The winner moves forward to take on the best in the league in that of BLG. The loser goes home. Three games remaining in this series. Two if one team can pull it out of the bag. Let's see who finds the advantage here in game three as we head to Summoner's Rift. Proc for Shanji to start off the game. <laughs> He'll be happy with that one. As, uh, oh, you won the laning phase. What do you do now? <laughs> Too much. It's like when you're fishing for mana flow band stacks early. It's it's just such a dopamine hit when you manage to get that at level one. You're like, ooh, I'm quicker I mean, towards my extra mana. Rookie That's... managed to do that onto, I think it was Doctor that stood in oh, the jungle, th managed to go. get that little Brock. There's a grab, there's two grass <laughs> procs. There's a mana. What do you do, man? Look how deep <laughs> NIP have gone into the enemy jungle, right? At level one, dropping yep. a ward on the blue buff. It will retreat away, but it does mean that Milky Way will be spotted off oh, the sweeper. Doesn't quite see the ward. Will life go into the pit? I don't think he will. They don't even realize Milky Way is spotted. Ah, uh, that's a problem because that gives you full information. Now, the reason you can go deep as NIP in that kind of place because you've got the Nautilus at level one. What can they do here? There's no real ability to really Wait, shut is Photix starting W? No, he's starting Q. You have to as the Zeri, so you can't do oh, that. True, 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 true. He's going to see if he can just harass them on the way back to lane, uses that full power also. Life, of course, can't combo. He doesn't have the W to go with his Q. So Photo can drop, just get themselves a little bit of a HP lead. And, of course, the bigger win is just knowing that Milky Way is starting bot side and what his likely pathing will be. So full information for Aki to start us off as Juan getting a hook onto Life there. Photic doing his best to follow up. You don't expect too much action in this bottom lane in the early phases, to be honest. If there's any action to be had, I'd be looking up towards the mid lane. That said, though, his laning faces have been extremely aggressive between our two mid laners. Rookie not quite getting as good a trades as uh, Care did in the previous game, but still trading aggressively in the mid lane. See that Care has gone for the fleet instead of the Hail of Blades, which Rookie went for on that Azir matchup. So looking for more of that sustain rather than the more burst damage outside of that. I've got a couple of different schools of thought here in the LPL in terms of what runes you should take and what matchup. You saw Scout being a big advocate for uh, the Conqueror on the Azir as well. So if you manage to position your soldiers well, even early game, you get huge extended damage in those trades. So Rookie uh, losing out on that early trade and the sustain from Care will make that trade even worse as those kind of keep racking through. Shalahu going for a ward in the pixel brush here. The wave will just about get underneath the tower. It's good news. Shalahu, it's not quite a crash, uh, but it's pretty close. It's pretty close. <laughs> I mean, he's still kind of stuck there, let's be honest. But Aki will just be finishing his clay. You don't really anticipate that much early action from a Nocturne in the top side. No, the thing about Nocturne is that, yes, you need that level 6 to really go aggressive. You can't walk into a Nocturne because if you spell shield stuff and he gets his lethal tempo stacked up and gets the fear, you die. So, um, Nocturne is this very unique champion in regards to being a good early game champion, but a good defensive early game champion. You, use, you, kind of, you throw your weight around, you go towards the scuttle. Milky Way doesn't want to go into a Nocturne like this because he doesn't want to close the distance. He's going to lose that top side scuttle, walk across mid lane, and he might just on the bot side. Yeah. One of those champions that just has good stats, you know, but it's yeah. about whether or not you can actually hit. Oh, okay, it just takes huge damage. Aki's there too. Rookie literally just burns them unpunished with that celestial power. As Aki will actually get himself a double scuttle off the back of this mid lane presence and also the prior mm -hmm. bot that Photo Control have found for themselves. And also the Warden bot side, knowing that Aki knows that he can, if he clears well, and he has cleared very fast, goes towards the top side scuffle, he'll be able to outflip in on first clear and then get himself to that flash oh. takeaway from Shalahu, though. Shanji, we said he could take over this game if he gets a good laning phase. It is starting well. And this has got to feel good for Shanji, right? After uh, 
him versus Wayward. He was on the Renekton side of this matchup a lot of games in that series. Must be nice for him to finally get a chance on the other side of the matchup on the stage. Chanty, a player that you know can pop off given the right opportunity. It does feel like maybe that opportunity is given to him today. Shaola, who immediately goes back and says, right, no more of that healing. Execution is calling immediately off the uh, off the first base and says, I cannot deal with this champion getting so much. The pr I think the problem here is that I don't think you ever stop Rek'Sai from healing enough. Um, it's nice, but the thing is, Renekton and Rek'Sai are both sustain-ish champions, but, I mean, Shanji is just going to get so much anyway. Just goes again. Yes, you've denied yeah, a bit. It I, just isn't enough, I don't feel. I do think there is value, though, in the... Hang on a second. Shala, who's going in for this one. Shanji still has the flash. Okay, he's got also a series of tunnels across the lane, so he'll just burrow out of there. But the, the amount of sustaining during the fights being limited does mean that you get a lot more value out of your concrete. You can brawl a little bit harder. I think one of the issues is... Oh, yeah. He needs to be careful. The hook lands. Oh, it's the Ignite. The it's a solo kill for Juo. The Ignite is burning. Ken survives. No, the minion. The melee minion. Okay, he's alive. He oh levels up. God. That was a little bit close. Four HP, but it's three more than he needed. A shield from his own E, and then one from the safeguard. Just about keeps him alive. Close run stuff, Juo. I think Juo has had a great series so far. Getting out onto the map early. We've seen it in all three games now. Uh, managing to get in towards mid lane, put down Vision. He was a player that we had a lot of questions about. I think it's only right to return to this uh, conversation and say, actually, Draw has had good impact so far. Let's see if he can keep it up. It certainly has. There's uh, Shanji going quite aggressive on the top side. Actually, Shala, who's going to use that Dominus onto Shanji. Big trade there. Aki's in the area, only level five. But Milky Way has found his way into the lane. This could be bad news for Shanji. You can stand still, so the Tremor Sense won't work. If Milky Way stands exactly still, Shanji won't know. Even if he goes in that brush, he won't know unless he's underneath. Okay. Oh. Shanji baiting out the W. I think Milky Way Yeah, there's Way's pinks. They're missing around. pinks. Okay, they saw it. They saw it. Oh, man. There's also, of course, um, <laughs> back from all the way back in Season 5 on Rek'Sai's release. Rek'Sai was a bit of a Lee Sin counter because if you stay borrowed and Lee Sin heads towards you, you just attack move towards the Lee Sin and you knock him out of his cube, even if he connects that first part of plants in the bot side. Knocked back from life, but Fotik hammering away here. Both ghosts from the AD carries. Relatively even tra trade, but Aki level six in the area means that even trades aren't really good enough for this FBX bot lane. If Aki flies in, suddenly it won't be even anymore. The honey fruit for Joel sets up for potentially strength around this Drake here for NIP, and looks like Aki will start it off. So Milky Way gonna get level six off this Gromp, so he's gonna have a bit more skirmishing power, but no vision to play around and no real ability to get in towards the side of a fight. And as we said, Nocturne, not really a champion you want to dive into. He's just really strong at just using his stats and good and, uh, abilities to see off those fights. So, uh, between bot side getting a good trade there, Rookie managing to you know get himself presence in mid lane as well, but it's going to be a free dragon, three grubs as well, so NIP, they get themselves all of the early game objectives in this game three themselves. And um, now we have to start thinking about, okay, yes, Aki, first ult available, it's a big thing, get you onto the board early and you know, get yourself active across the map. Rookie also going to start astrally flying across the map too, so watch out to see how he gets himself out of lane now as well. Life, we're gonna clear this vision. Milky Way really wants to get into these lanes. We saw him hovering around Shanji in the top side. We see him hovering around bot. But it feels like, just like game number one of the series, we saw NIP doing a really, really good job on this blue side of just not allowing Milky Way to have that impact that he wants to have in this early game. And that early game in both of these series has been Kind of back and forth, actually. You know, credit to both of these teams. When both of them have found opportunities, they have not let up on them. The early games have actually been very, very good. Milky Way, of course, in that last game was the difference maker. But in the first one, it was really on uh, Rookie and Draw and Aki, all three of them working together to shut down Milky Way. Now, Milky Way just actually has a ward in his own jungle. I'm actually not sure who ends up putting that one down there. But it's all the way right behind his red buff. Again, NIP doing a good job of just making sure Milky Way doesn't have these pockets of vision and fog of war to hide in before he comes out and uses that level 6 Lee Sin. We're all waiting for that moment, aren't we? 0-0 zero, zero on the scoreboard. Shit. This is the longest it's gone in this series without First Blood. Milky Way is in the top side of the map. Shamala who trying to look, look a bit juicy here. <laughs> trying to bait Shanji in. Aki is in his top hemisphere as well. 
which could lead to a potential opportunity to ult in and join a 2v2 if that were to happen. But Milky Way resets and it will be negated. Aki is still there. He's going towards his Gromp next. So Shala, who's got to be cautious not to push too far out. Top Hemisphere. I mean, so unlike real life, you know that the Rift is flat, <laughs> Someone's right? Rift is a globe. <laughs> Is Rift is a, oh my god, have we, have we been wrong this whole time? Rift is actually a globe. If you if you walk far enough out of top lane, you end up in bot lane. That's again. the one. We're actually it's just, we're, like, we're, we're it's just like Challenger. If you get high <laughs> enough in Challenger, you go back down to bronze, just like that one guy. Yeah, yeah. Same with someone as Rift. Uh, geography. Joel gets yeah, Shanji. to life, and Shanji's moved over as well. Growth started. Remember, first three went to NIP already. First Drake went to NIP. This is neutral dominance from NIP for now. Oh no! Doesn't quite find it. Joel gets away from the Pulverize. That's going to be two grubs taken. And I think FPX will deny the six. But honestly, five? I think NIP are happy with that. Five are happy with that, especially since they just managed to survive. Draw getting picked off there. Just managed to flash out in time. And also, life getting level six. Level six, Alistair versus level five, Nautilus. Like, that's such a huge support difference. Also, um, yes, we've seen the Rex I do a lot of work in laning phase. Um, one of the reasons why Renekton used to occasionally be picked even out of meta for early topside fights is because his dominance so early on gives him so much value in larger fights with AoE Qs and empowered Ws. So I think NIP, they're lucky to get away without a proper fight on that one. They need to wait for just a little longer. They're waiting for Zeri to get towards that ship. They're waiting for Rookie to get towards his Rhylai's and maybe unlock that um, Sky's Descend as well. You know, he started to stack that one up as well. You start stacking up Stardust after you've reached level 6 to get towards that big ult. Their time is not quite yet. I feel like both compositions... It's not often you see this in League of Legends these days, but you've got similar kind of identities on a lot of these mm. picks. Like Zeri versus Jinx, very similar identities. Nor Alistair, pretty similar identities. Even the Aesol and the yeah, Azir yeah. in the mid lane. Even Nocturne and Lee Sin, like these kind of aggressive champions that sort of fall off a little bit later. You've got sort of tanky bruiser top laner that wants to be on a flank. It does feel like very similar drafts for both teams. And that does mean that it's interesting, isn't it? Because obviously there are different peaks and troughs in power for these two different compositions. But generally speaking, I don't think there's a point where either team is particularly counted out entirely. There's, there's always room yeah. for outplay. Oh, absolutely. And that's the best kind of game in my eyes. I mean, yes, I, I have a lot of love for people who strategically outthink their opponents and have better drafts. I think particularly in, in the West, we talk about drafts a lot more because um, th there's just a lot of people who talk about it. That's a good thing. It's a good thing to talk about drafts. And, itemization and how you can win out with these micro percentages but there is just something really it's, it's kind of fundamental to competition right in terms of competitive games and sports and whatever where you have oh. similar standing points and you just outplay oh no dogdom's been found he drops down the flame chompers but they don't care about walls they're coming out of the walls Aki with first blood as the comet lands milky way is denied shanji moving over flash away from the empress of and a double knock up from shanji nip they are FBX in the jungle, Milky Way taken down, and Rookie's Shallow. going huge. He's out of mana though, and he's stuck in the back of the pit. Stun comes down, Rookie, no flash available, double kill for Shaolau. And as we said, there are a lot of similarities between these teams. Resets, ability to start the fights with your big ultimates. The NIP find the opening first, because Dogtown is just bluntly way out of position. You're against that Nocturne and the Assault. They can fly over walls very, very easily. So that's a bad mistake from the AD carrier, Fun Plus Phoenix. Luckily, Shallow who comes in to save the day and gets himself two big kills. That's important. This Renekton with gold now might be able to stave off some of these dives later on. Dogtown, you can't be walking like this. Even uses the Flame Chompers really erroneously there. I mean, um, he sees that he sees the Aesol flying over with the ward over the wall, but he just places them wrongly. Bad moment for him. You know, the shuffle doesn't work on to Rookie. Great clutch flash from him too, and it means that Kara is absolutely out of place in this fight beyond that point. Again, they're very lucky that Renekton gets into the fight and manages to really get some damage done with a slice and dive by, uh, dice by using Shanji as a taxi into the backline. <laughs> I love at the end of the play, Chua and Shanji both full health are like, do we help him? He's kind of out of mana. Uh, I, yeah. I think we just <laughs> sacrifice him at this point and walk away. Three to two. We had a quiet early game and suddenly there are five kills on the board all off of Dr. <laughs> mispositioning slightly, walking over a ward, and that is the power of this comp, right? The fact mm. that you've got this Aesol and Nocturne both flying anywhere onto a play.
that is the big difference between these two competitions. Yes, uh, compositions rather, because you have a lot of carries with similar identities in terms of long range magic dealers and AOE AD carries. Um, but the ability to cross walls from Rek'Sai, from Nocturne Ultimate, from uh, the the A Soul, who then of course gets resets on the Ws too. Zeri can also do it with the E as well. It means that you cannot afford to be caught out even across terrain as FBX. Now NIP, they're going to let the Herald go. They're going to cross map. They have themselves the five drops. Very quick for them to take these advantages on the other side. Shanji getting gold for NIP does change things for FPX in some ways. We did say, you know, that um, this this Rek'Sai can be pretty much uncontested frontline for a lot of this late game. Already at a Thornmail, getting towards what I would assume to be. So LPL's done a couple of different builds. Thornmail into, um, into uh, Titanic Hydra has been very popular. If he gets towards that Titanic Hydra, it can also be a mid-game damage threat as well. Shanji over the oh, wall, draw. flash into ultimate. Juo has no summoners in his voting to pick up the kill. Dokdom going down their Milky Way up to the top side here. Has Herald and Care wants to set up a play. Empress Divide available, Flash available. Rookie will clear the wave. And once again, Milky Way trying to get into these lanes, but to no avail. And the reason he can't is because look at the wards, the blue wards on his side of the map. There was one even on the top tri brush. There's one next to those Raptors. And of course, on the other side, FTX don't have any deeper wards to see when Aki's going to alter them, when Juo is going to flash over the wall like that too. Once again, it's come down to a lot of the information warfare, the advanced notice that you get from uh, a lot of this vision can change this game. And now, sadly for Dogdam, he's been kind of on the, the losing end of that twice. I think that one, um, again, just pushing up very heavily in the mid lane without Milky Way there to supervise them. It's an awkward moment, but they just don't have the vision to be pushing like that. They certainly don't. I just want to take a second to appreciate how annoying this comp is for NIP. Like, yeah. every single champion, aside from maybe Nocturne, has a way to dash out of a play. Like, the, you've got the Nautilus hooks, both, uh, you know, Rek'Sai and Zeri kind of have reputations for that annoyance with their tunnel and their E. Uh, but even Rookie can kind of W out of the plays. The amount of mobility of this composition is kind of hilarious. Well, this is happening. Um, less about micro mobility, macro mobility. And I peep, they get themselves now two side lane out of turrets. It is at the trade of mid lane out of turret, which is, of course, more valuable on the whole than side lane ones. But when you have five grubs and you have real threats to even push inner turrets later into the game very, very quickly, uh, um, FBX needs to be very careful now at letting, you know. Rookie and Shanji continue to walk up to these towers, particularly with the right side, five grubs, and the demolished building HP. These towers really do disappear, even though it's a tank champion in the side lane. We're quickly mentioning farm as well. I know uh, in LPL we don't often talk about farm numbers. It's not really our uh, priority as a region. We're farming champions. Are we, are we farming what? champions now? 192 CS, 17 minutes. It's not bad, and you can see the player gold popping up there. Photic is way ahead of the curve right now as he finishes his second item. Got that kill early on as well. Shanji spots out life. Will tunnel himself to safety and should be able to defend this tower as well. Uh, yeah, no, Fotek having that amount of CS. Once he gets towards Navori, so you get, you know, Navori, a Hurricane, AoE, Shiv, with your Lightning Crash going through as well, you're very, very good at damaging the entirety of the front line from FPX and even tapping some damage onto the back line too. So, FPX, um, this is a problem. <laughs> you have effectively similar AD carries and you are behind in that role. The way that FPX come back into this game is with an opportunistic pick to get those resets, but they're losing in macro and they don't really have control over these sidelines. Oh my god, Rookie just keeps on going. The Comet comes down to uh, protect himself. And that was the empowered one as well. That's going to be ideal, honestly, that that's on cooldown. Yeah, that's... Um... We'll leave it at that, shall we? With, yeah, I mean, if, I, if I speak, I'm in big trouble. I don't know. Um, I, I honestly think we maybe should talk about it, because Drake's coming up in 30 seconds. Shallow, yeah, who's Dominus, will be yeah. up way sooner. I mean, the, the best I can think of is trying to mind game Shallow, who flashing forward for an empowered W. That doesn't happen. He uses that ult. Now he doesn't have it for a big play like this, as he just goes forward and gets the tap damage instead. Now, NIP will get themselves this turret in mid lane as well. No, they can't quite go up. I think they're afraid of life and Milky Way getting themselves a big play. Now, FPX, they need to push out mid lane, try and get themselves into river through the safer, wider opening of mid lane into river. But they have lost vision control. Drake has just spawned. This might just get one shot, honestly, by NIP. Uh, Asol doing here. a lot of damage. TP available for Shanji, but like you say, he's not here just yet. Now TPing, it's a deep flank from him. But Milky Way is already behind enemy lines here. He's got to be cautious. Milky Way not spotted just yet. Shanti tries to get on Shallow Who, but he gets out of dodge. 
Oh, this feels tense. Now the jungler actually on the drake for the time being. His life on the front line. Milky Way goes wide on his first Q and Shanji. Steve Shala who out of the fight. But Schwolo and the rocket the is found. Doctum starts to fight off strong. Smite comes in. Drake for FBX. And in comes Care to set it all up. He pays for it. With his life as Milky Way dives onto the fight line. And kicks Votic back as well. Doctum scaling up and finding the reset. The attack speed in. He's excited. And so are FPX fans everywhere! FPX, they didn't have themselves the optimal setup. They didn't have themselves the early gold lead, but it doesn't matter one bit. Clean team fighters only care goes down. They take themselves the dragon, they take themselves some gold, and they get themselves well and truly back into this game. Now, I think that Aki does give a lot of different uh, problems to Milky Way in terms of getting that key on the back line. He's trying to get that spell shield over, but it means that Aki cannot be there threatening the back line before Jinx gets the kill. Aki makes the choice, I'm going to shut down Milky Way at the start of this fight rather than dock down, and it doesn't pay dividends. The spell shield's at the end there, but this Nocturne, I really feel like this is the big difference maker here. The Nocturne is not a factor oh, in this shallow. fight. Really nice from Shala who to deny Rookie's escape in the fight as well. And just the brawling at this point. The composition is so good at following up when they start a play well. They finish a play well. Milky Way, no Go. fear of the tower whatsoever. <laughs> Dives in for the Q2. He wanted a kill of his own. Is still on zero kills. Uncustomary for Milky Way. But I want to quickly mention that we literally showed a clip of Milky Way team fighting on this Lee Sin, where he <laughs> doesn't get any kills, where he does stick around on barely any HP. He knows how to play exactly on that knife's edge. And particularly with, you know, the second cooldown of a safeguard, the Eclipse as well. Life is maybe blowing his flash hit. Caught on River, try to get himself some extra vision. I imagine that one's going to go for free. He's trying to stick around as long as he can, but Baron will just kill him if he sticks around much longer. And there we go, Flash will be used, but it costs care. Kazaki uses exactly. Flash in the previous play. The Comet is down, and that's the combo NIP have been looking for. Shanji forcing more summoners as Doctor is stuck, and this is huge for Fotic, who cleans it all up. NIP punish FBX as they look for some vision in topside, and that punishment will be kills, it will be barren. It will be a very, very quick snuffing out of FPX trying to roar back into this game after that dragon fight. With Baron going down, NIP will get themselves a real chokehold over the map now, and FPX will have to go back to the drawing board and start themselves another comeback. I mean, take another look at this because I thought that FPX were in an unlosable position, but this was a Jurassic throw from life. He finds a way. <laughs> And Kerr, unfortunately, trying to defend his support here. Jokes aside, that hook hitting from Joel is perfect. And then the follow-up is beautiful. Let's be honest here. Life should just flash out the back of the pit. He should not bait his team into this fight. FPX, by sticking around for this fight, have invited this play to happen. They could have just flashed that Alistair over the back of the Baron pit and say, look, we would have loved that flash for the team fight, but we can't afford to keep it right now. And instead, now they have to st share, um, stare down rather the Baron on the other side. And NIP, they are clutching out some important moments here. And it's a continuation of a Knife's Edge series. Both of these teams, in the, particularly Game 2 and now Game 3, have had good games... Uh, Kind of good plays back and forth. Votic now, two and a half items getting very close to that third. He's feeling so incredibly strong on this Seri. And not to mention Rookie as well getting close to a third item. That Aesol is something to be feared later on into the game, especially when he's this far ahead in gold. Even though CS wise it doesn't feel like he's that far ahead. We can see in the items that he is. Baron now being used to try and break open some of these tier twos. It's still very early on in the game, so you don't necessarily expect inhibitors to be taken unless some kind of fight is found for NIP. Ah, uh, so you can see that Jinx Ooh. actually getting, you know, max rank to uh, rank of that um, switcher route. Got um, more fish bones giving you a hell of a lot of extra attack range. You can punish quite nicely at that point. Of course, um, you do have a big, big wreck side to get through on the yep. front line from NIP, which means that dog down. Probably needs to go. Well, if you get towards Lord Dominic's regards the third item, that's great for you. You also need yourself an Infinity Edge at some point too. So if you manage to survive through the three, four items, yes, FPX can very much punish the first target in a fight. Even then, the problem is once you get to those three, four items, you can have you know four, five items likely onto the Aurelian Soul and onto the Zeri, and that's the problem of having like for like carries. 
So we retreat for a second here. A TP coming on through from Shanji to get back onto the map. Drake has just spawned, or is spawning, sorry, in two seconds. His life tries to fight for control. FPX get mid prio despite the Baron buff on the side of NIP through tempo. Right, okay, this is a good time to fight. They have very similar items. Life might be forced to use his ultimate here, pulled back into the play, and now NIP can follow this forwards. Voting with one, the lightning chaining the comet from the sky. Everything they could want. Milky Way, it looks good, but he sacrifices his life, and the team still dies. NIP, they just run an FPX over. FPX, they try and thread the needle. It's what, two items to two and a half. It's about as good as it gets from that kind of gold lead before NIP complete their three items completely. FPX though, they just can't find the engage and they can't find the follow-up. NIP, they've really played out this Nocturne composition pretty well. They punish FPX when they've looked for these more sketchy plays. They're gonna get themselves a dragon off the back of it. Continue getting that gold lead ever and ever further forward. And you know, you can understand why they look for this fight. It's just really hard for Dockdown to follow up on this. He's not in position to do this. And then we come down to the problem of, well, much easier for NIP to run down the fight. Lightning Crash, resets on the Astral Flight from the Aurelian Soul. The Nocturne flying forwards, having the Stride Breaker to close them down. And yeah, Milky Way gets a multi-man kick to try and disrupt the team fight, but it's just not enough. And now you have no Flash and release in for the next play either. <laughs> Shanji with the point and click ultimate at the end, he's like, dodge this. <laughs> <laughs> Flying around the fight, kicking all my friends in the face. Well, I have an Arbiter. What are you going to do about it? It's kind of like playing against Vagar, right? You just, uh, <laughs> there's only so much outplay available to okay, you. 12 so to 6 now. I know what I'm going to be doing in the break between the next game as well, is I'm just going to be getting that one, that one, like, still of Trinity in the first Matrix movie. Yeah. Just like, just like, it's going to be just Shanji's face or just the Rek'Sai on top of it instead. Just dodge this. Fantastic. Oh, I do love a Matrix reference. And, uh, you know, it does feel like right now, FPX, their mouse. They've just opened the box with the Tommy guns. They've turned around. The window's become a wall. And suddenly Agent Smith, AKA Rookie, is <laughs> in the doorway. It does feel, actually, to be honest, it's Photic this game. Photic is the problem. Photic is the one that's gonna be shredding these health bars. Three items though on both carries. So really pick your poison for NIP. And uh, let's talk about the fact that as well that two games now in this series, NIP get themselves this Nocturne. Two games looking like wins right now. I don't want to jinx it too hard, but they are 8,000 gold up. It feels like this is very much a style that NIP are flourishing with. And it's also just punishing the jinx pick really heavily. Um, you have, of course, when you have the Skies Descend as well, with Nocturne having a lot of golds and there not being a Braum or a Time Kench to directly protect or heal and shield in terms of enchantment jinx as well, the Skies Descend will add enough damage that they cannot fight particularly well after that point. Now, you do have a three-item Jinx here. That is still important. The Lord Dominus Regard means that you do over-chase now. And NIP have been known to do that. Aki has been known to do that. Hasn't done it as much this series, so we no credit to him. But still, job's not done just yet. NIP cannot afford to over-chase, particularly into this Jinx, if they find themselves in a pocket behind their front line dealing damage. I feel like Shaolau, who is a braver man than I, is <laughs> stepping up <laughs> to clear that control ward. There's four players of NIP nearby, but I think both teams acknowledging that and I don't really want to use all their cooldowns onto that Renekton, especially with Baron up on the top side of the map. Don't want to overcommit. The bottom side, Joel, you've got to be real cautious there. Because Milky Way, he knows Jiu-Jitsu. <laughs> he knows Kung Fu. At least get the quote right. Is it? Like that? Yes, oh, he knows. Ki I know Kung Fu. <laughs> you know, I've well, been, I've, I've you know what? He knows Jiu-Jitsu too, okay? So okay, he knows both of them. Okay, off. fine. <laughs> I, I, it's, it's from the DVD extras, okay? It's a deleted scene. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, uh, I'll, I'm going to take your word for it, um, and we'll see exactly. <laughs> Look, they're ninjas. They know everything in terms of martial arts. They have themselves a, a grand amount of training in that one. And they're trying to put themselves a knife in the dark into Fun Plus Phoenix. This is, again, returning back to the stakes and the expectations of this game. As the Baron is started up, NIP, they're in a great position against a team that they were not favored against. But now they're really putting them over the coals. The ninjas already in their pajamas, and they're telling FPX that it's bedtime. They're trying to chase in, but Rookie flies over the wall. The death charge setting it up, but not really the follow-up that they wanted. That's paranoia used as well. And NIP can kind of rinse and repeat. Yes, that's the Nocturnal on cooldown. That's Drozel on cooldown, but look how fast they kill the Baron. 
Oh, no, of course, Rookie doesn't even need to be in the pit. He can stay around here and put a singularity onto someone if they want to come in and contest, but they just don't have the vision. FPX, they are just not, not anywhere on the map right now. They're trying to conserve their strength, trying to get themselves as much farm as possible before what feels like, let's be honest, one last fight left in it for them. Be nice for them to have their summoners up, but with Doc Dan not having either of his, it's very hard to wait for that fight now. FBX, I don't think they're going to have themselves the items and the summoners to really overcome this. It's going to be a hard uphill battle to get themselves a reset against a team with just so much more tank and damage than them. It does feel tense, doesn't it? Even though this is like, a, by all accounts, I would say that this game is done. But I've seen FBX do it. I've seen multiple <laughs> times this year, FBX claw back games that, by all accounts, are lost. If there's any team that can do it, it's FBX. And if there's any team that can throw a late game lead as well, it's NIP, honestly. Shanji, he did see a Trevor sense. Yeah, he did. He's also really tanky. Here. Look, honestly, he could walk up anyway. He's a level 17, three and a half That's item Rek'Sai. I mean, yes, I respect the fact that most top players would go there and go, yes, I'm on weak side. I will I will play respectfully of these type of players. You don't have to on Rek'Sai. It's the real strength of this pick. You don't have the easy quick kill onto him before he gets the tunnel out as well. Now we see NIP pushing on multiple lanes. Nocturne in the mid lane, ready to respond to either side of the map with the max rank, max range Nocturnal. FBX desperate not to give them the opportunity. They're doing everything they can to deny those chances. The thing is, it's like the longer this goes on with the Baron, it, you're slowly but surely bleeding out of the game. It's not enough to just not allow an opportunity to NIP. You've got to somehow find an opportunity for yourself as well. Yeah. It's down to Milky Way. It's also down to life. This Alistair can be that setup tool. If life, you know, speaking jurassically once again, can find a way. We're just going full 90s movies today. That's that's the thing for the rest it of was, the cast. It was, it was a better time. It was a better time. I and mean, we've already got ourselves Milky Way versus the Aurelian Soul. You could call that a, a Star Wars of kind. And um, we'll see it. But who gets to shoot first in this particular um, cantina brawl? We'll see if anyone goes for that elixir. Turns into a giant marshmallow man. Okay, I'm, I'm reaching now. Shala, who's reaching for a fight as well, dives in and forced back out. Oh, Shanji! NIP on the counter punch. It's a huge knock up and it's a wipe. Fodes it with two and Rookie gets one as well. Docked him a Milky Way, sent back in and Rookie, he's not even going to let them pack. He's in his pajamas still. And he's happy about it. It's bedtime for FBX as NIP go 2 1 up in this series. Oh my word, they have just been blasted into a galaxy far, far away. Fun Plus <laughs> Phoenix, they came in as the overdogs. They came in as favorites. And now they are against match points against the ninjas from the shadows. Fantastic game number three here is NIP once again. Getting these Nocturne Cold positions and once again finding wins. They did it versus WE. Now two games in this series through Aki's Nocturne Jungle, through this Aurelian Soul. Been able to dive into the enemy composition. It was a close mid game. It was tense. But the second the NIP started to get control of things, it felt like it was slowly slipping away from FBX. And there are some very important learnings from this game as well, because we've now seen that you have the Ari and the Talia, which are pretty much must bans versus Rookie, but the A Soul is also a factor. Was he the main character in this game? No, but it's another pick which you can control laning phase, wave clear, and get out onto the map. FPX must adapt, innovate, and overcome. And I feel like NIP playing multiple styles now as well. The first Nocturne comp was much more aggressive. This one, much more about scaling. I feel like there are more strings to the bow than there were in the previous series. We're gonna jump into a break and then head towards game number four. If you're an FBX fan at home, you gotta be praying in this break that we head to Silver Scrapes.
welcome back everybody to the LPL to an absolute banger to game number four between NIP and FPX. I'm much I'm joined by Nymera and we've got an absolute treat of a series on our hands. This is the LPL that I've been wanting to see all year and I feel like both of these teams are absolutely bringing it today. And you know, you can have as many expectations as you want. You can set up FPX to be the overdogs to the underdogs of NIP, but Rookie has a bite to match the bark. This was a, again, another great game of the ASOL coming out in this series. Of course, Care had a fantastic game just before this too, and it feels like NIP, um, a lot of the way that they have been playing out their mid games, how they have structured their vision control, which was very contested against WE, has massively leveled up. Wards like this, the spot out dog them coming back between different lanes to cash him out, sets up this game for success. This was a game between two very similar compositions, which means that any mistakes are exacerbated because everyone is using the same tools. Once someone gets ahead, they do your job, but better. And it comes from plays like this. And I will say as well, Shanji, I feel has leveled up between the two series here. Obviously, he's having the Rek'Sai side of the matchup, which definitely helps, but less Renekton, and more Rek'Sai. I'm very happy for him. I'm sure he is too. As I mean, <laughs> the Observers are just loving every it. game. the better, aren't they? <laughs> Oh, it's a cinematographer's dream. It is. And you know what? I'm not going to blame it. It's great to see. And it's great to see this level of gameplay as well. Again, it is a continuation of me feeling like, um, honestly, this game and this series has been determined by opportunities taken well. Now, I do think that in this game, particularly, Darkdown was punished very, very heavily. I think that some of these movements over wards were too aggressive. He pushed up too far. And I think even looking back to game one on the Twitch, Darkdown has been quite isolated and quite exposed. But on the same way, NIP have pounced so, so quickly. Faster than they've done in this entire split so far. I feel like NIP as well have done such a good job of respecting Milky Way. I feel like the name of the strategy for FPX is be aware of what Milky Way is able to do and deny it. We saw it in game number one. And we saw the huge Lee Sin performance from game number two. Game number three, though, I feel like they played around that Lee Sin much better than they had in the previous game. It feels like NIP are learning. They're evolving as the series goes on. He's beginning to believe we're going to carry on with the Matrix <laughs> references from the last one. By the way, apparently <laughs> we found in, out they that... They plug in the USB in the machine. They're like, I know how Milky Way plays jungle. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it turns out there were actually two different lines of the Kung Fu Jiu-Jitsu line. I just never knew that. I'm learning so much yeah. today about League of Legends, about 90s actually, movies. Yeah. It's been a great day. We should we should fill in the audience because that was we talked about <laughs> it afterwards. I, I googled it. Turns out he says both I know Kung Fu and I know Jiu-Jitsu. There are two versions of the film. This Why? Is, this, uh, Why would the, there be two versions well, of the film? I don't know. Talk, I mean, if we're going to talk about that, talk about George Lucas and the Cantina scene. Yeah, Han, so Han Solo shot first. I'm never backing down on that one. I have no idea where they changed it. Look, anyway, movies change. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know how I segue that back into this. Movies change, gameplay changes. Look, we'll, Tell you what. We'll see. <laughs> NIP shot first today, <laughs> and it then did, FBX shot back. NIP with their second shot here. Two ones now in uh, in terms of shots. Uh, yeah, we're, I'm struggling <laughs> here, but uh, FPX now have to punch back. We'll see what they've got. Mm. You can see the stress on Milky Way here. I can imagine he feels a lot of pressure on his shoulders. And as a rookie, you've got to remember, this is his first ever LPL best oh, of yeah. five. This is the first time he's ever been in playoffs. The amount of fans this guy's built, the amount of pressure on his shoulders from his organization, from the fans at home. And now a change of scene as both junglers taking a respect ban. Obviously the kindred for Milky Way, but now Aki has his Nocturne removed. Ooh, so what are we giving up for this? You are blue side. We are letting through oh, one look of at our... Aki's face! Aki's it's the so happy that... but, but, but he knows that's important. He knows that's so important. Rookie is going to get one of Ari or Talia, almost certainly in this game now. Um, and then you have to worry about what's going to happen with the rumble, I suppose, from NIP. You might have to ban that on red side and just say we don't want them to first pick that one. But, well, help. I mean, even at this point, what if we say that you let the rumble go through and then you trade it for the Ari for Rookie? And if they pick another pick, then you pick up the rumble for Shanji. And then it feels like, particularly with how Shanji is playing, um, that he could just take that top lane matchup into anything. I feel like NIP have FBX on the ropes in the draft already. This is a big change from FBX, and I'm not sure I like it. See what the end result of this strategic shift is going to be. I wonder if they move back to like Milky Way on Zinzao, Care on the Karma. Like Karma has kind of not really existed in this series. It's been way lower priority in playoffs in general. 
it's still a powerful combo. And I feel like that Nico ban from NIP is all about stopping Care being able to be that kind of supportive mid for Milky Way. Well, hear me out here. Maybe we early pick Jax or, or Graves for Milky Way. I, I, I've seen now multiple yeah. games where it's been you know, four or five jungle bans uh, and even more coming through um, from the second round of bans. I think Milky Way needs an early pick here now to get him onto the board instead of being someone who's a bit more facilitative. And yes, I do think that Lee Sin has been valuable, but we are going to see Rumble let through. That was unbanned. I would imagine NIP respond with an RE very early on and then get yourself maybe yeah. um, something like the Varus as well for Photic wouldn't go amiss. I'm curious what NIP will go for, but honestly, I'm thinking maybe FBX. They might go Maokai. It might be a Milky Way Maokai angle. Yeah. Where they go with like, I don't know if Care's a Jace player some kind of AD mid. I mean, we've seen it alongside Azir in the mid lane, but when you've already got the Rumble as well, I don't know if you want that much AP, but Rookie's got his Ari, and Juo's got knocked, uh, got knocked on, got Nautilus. Yep. This feels already really powerful for NIP. And NIP, they have choices now. You can go towards uh, the Varus Delena alongside that uh, not Nautilus, or you can go for the Senna. You have different answers there. So FPX, they might have to take away that Varus and say, look, we cannot afford to let that Varus Nautilus go over. Again, the, ult the laning phase is too strong, and then uh, the ability to play around those ultimates is too strong as well. You cannot give two winning lanes on the bot side of the map to NIP, so the Varus has taken over. But what else do you lock in now? Do you have to lock in something for Milky Way? Maybe you could just go for an early Jax or a Graves and just hope that it works out for the best? The other option is potentially going for maybe something like the Renata in the support role. I mean, it could, well, just be life playing Rumble as well, to be fair. Whether or not Shala, who's willing to take that up top, that would certainly be a powerful flex for them. Because Shala, who's not really been a Rumble player this year, but it is going to be Milky Way taking that lease in. And he's still got a smile on his face. He's 2-1 down in this series with all this weight on his shoulders, and he's still got a smile on his face. Okay, so, NIP, they aren't, they aren't necessarily locking in for laning phase here. It's not going to be something... I mean, I suppose if you're clicking the center into the Varus and, um, Rumble, you, it's just not very nice for the for the Nautilus who gets burned down too easily. So the Jinx is basically a concession saying that you're not necessarily going to win lane. You can get wave control because of the AoE of uh, the Rockets. But then what you're looking for from NIP is a hook or a charm into the other one, into Jinx resetting, winning that team fight through the recess. We did say that this pick has been very useful for a lot of teams to kind of overcome some difficult dragon setups to get that one reset. Whereas on the other side, I do think that if you can get yourself cat with an actual counter to the Ari, maybe you can play around strong bot lane, strong mid lane laning phase and give Milky Way for once an early game platform to play around. Let's see if they can set it up for him. And I know a lot of people waiting with bated breath to see if that will come true. The Vagar banned against Care. Yeah, you're banning away the pocket counters. Maybe Annie as well. Vex was also an old RE counter. There are a couple of tricks you can go towards, but what's Care got practiced, you know? That'll be the question. Kisante, though, going to be removed from Shalahu. It's one of the picks that he's played a lot of, obviously, given respect to the fact that this rumble very likely a support for life as opposed to going to that top side. But again, if something like the Renekton is locked in there for Shanji, there's a very real chance that Shalahu does flex this. I don't know if he's been practicing secretly behind the scenes. It's not something that he's brought to the stage this year, but it's certainly an option for them strategically in theory. What a world we're living in where actually FPX have quadruple banned jungle. They ban yeah. out the Wukong, they ban out the Shinsao, both really good early game junglers which combo up well with the Ari. You can understand the fear of allowing Rookie with a strong jungle combination to allow his Ari, one of the very, very best Ari's in the world get a good platform to work off of. Now, FPX, they know the top lane matchup. It's an Ude, which can do fine into a Rumble top lane, so you might have to pick in something that just you know, splits the difference. I think it's more valuable to have the Rumble as a support this time. It does well into the Nautilus, and the Varus Nautilus can be a very strong combination for themselves. So, yep. Renekton locked in to just play Bruiser versus Tank in topside. So, what goes mid is the question. Care is a flexible player. Now, this okay. is a solo Terra pick that Diana comes through. I'd assume for K, okay. unless it's some kind of lease in mid. Yeah, I have to say, in seasons past, Diana always used to do well against Ari. Now, the key thing about Ari is that if you're against champions which can damage you very heavily with one skill or rotation, so typically this is a Victor E, Oriana QW, or a Diana Q, 
you can get all in very, very quickly. Post level six, the Diana can very much assassinate the Ari. It's very much about how you position in lane. And when you have the Lee Sin kick and the Diana combination with the equalizer over the top of it as well in the team fights, this could be a very, very powerful pocket pick. But now you have to beat double dash champions in mid jungle into a poppy last pick from Aki. Great last pick response from Aki. Is it going to be enough is the question. The Diana coming out. This is something that Care has not played professionally across his career. This is a debut on the Diana. This has been a bit of a solo queue terror of late, especially on Korean server. Care now bringing it onto the main stage when he's up against match point, Man. when he's up against elimination, he brings out Diana mid. We've talked about him being a flexible mid laner, but he's up against rookie. He's up against one of the best to ever do it. And he brings Diana to the table. I cannot wait to see this. I love this so much. We saw in game one, Rookie's Ari take over the game in a way that only he can. We ask Care, where are your counters to this? He's picked out the Diana. He might end up going towards the Lich Bane, very bursty. Tried to outplay Ari. And then if he managed to land just one good Q, assassinations can follow. So Rookie needs to be respectful. This is not an easy matchup. Care might've found himself some secret source here, at least in the 1v1, but it is hard to play into the rest of the composition. We'll have to see how he plays against, particularly that Nautilus Poppy CC combo. One thing I will say, very good at kind of matching that level six presence from the RE. Let's find out game number four now between FBX and NIP. So, any fans at home? that are uh, big on watching Lol Dobby's videos, you will have seen the combos available from this mid lane <laughs> Diana. Has been a bit of a terror. You can uh, use your Q to set up your E reset on a minion to then get the all in onto your lane opponent. I'm sure Rookie is no yeah. slouch when it comes to the matchup. I'm sure he's played against plenty of these in solo queue. Well, even then, I feel like down a solo queue has really fallen off in the last few years as well. I haven't seen it much in, in mid lane for a little while, but it, as soon as you get multiple points into your queue, again, just tapping one queue can be really powerful. One of the big things about Diana is that she can trade better through the wave with a quicker skill shot on your queue compared to, you know, the, the REQ on the other side. And of course, can just tap that W as well to get a good play there. Um, see that? Shanji wow. pushing Shalahu out very early, and that means that he's going to have to teleport back into lane. That's all for him. We have a lane swap as well. So, and Shanji's not giving this away either. The fact that Shanji's on the top side bullying Xiaolahu means that this is set up for a cheese kill. Xiaolahu is gonna walk straight into the hook of Zhuo. Photic is being set up for first blood here. Xiaolahu flashes the ignite, burning, and he will survive. But here comes Aki. Can he stop the recall in time? A flash E would do it, maybe. The pop ticking gives him a little bit more HP. How much can Aki get here? Do they want to dive it? Yes, they do! Aki, first blood! NIP playing against the rookie of the split. Get the jungle advantage, and here we go in mid. Cares in trouble now as Shanji's just roaming around the map, but the charm is perfect! Flash away! Flash from rookie! It's not enough! Care barely escapes. Oh, and the assassination works in top lane, but the ninjas can't make it double in bot lane. So, what's gonna happen with this bot lane crash? FPX, free time in this bot side. One of the big reasons why lane swaps disappeared after season five or so is because bot lane turret is now easier to kill than top lane in the first few minutes of the game. Shallo who has gone into mid lane and Kara has got the wave clipped up and he might just get dove. I, I don't know how you survived this one. Aki is going to be there again. It's two already on the poppy and Fotic is just sweeping a place now. This is the gameplay of Mr. LPL. Another shuriken from the ninja's lands. But we now see Shanji. Maybe he can get dove. It's very hard to dive. Early game Udyr all the same though. Once he leveled up, he hasn't got himself that iron mantle to give himself as much defenses. Milky Way takes that Gromp, potentially threatening here. If he can reach level three, I think the dive is off though. See if he can. There we go. Level three hit. They're still going to go for this one. Life there to start it off. Milky Way in the scene as well. TP immediately channeled on the other side of Shanji. Tries to survive for the time being. And Milky Way retreats. Rookie now looking for something off the back side of the play. Charm still available. And it hits on the him. Flash from Zhuo. What a play from NIP. Answering everything from FBX. Shanji trying to escape now as Milky Way goes in. Life forced out of the play. Milky Way trying to retreat. But I think NIP won a little bit more. Zhuo stepping forwards. The hook on 
Milky Way and the Charm as well. Two more as NAP annihilate FBX. We have more than a kill a minute. Four minutes into the game, five kills for NIP. I was worried for just a second that NIP would get themselves into an awkward situation if they didn't find one of these kills. Shanji has more kills on champions than he does on minions. 102, but a grand fat total of zero CS for the Uda on the top side. I wonder if we're finally going to get a reprieve now as we finally get towards standard lanes for a little bit. But Aki might have an opening towards top yeah. side. Honestly, I feel like this is fantastic though from NIP basically saying, oh, you got your Diana counter in mid lane, you've got your Rumble in bot lane, you got Renekton up for the top lane. Well, we're just never going to have normal lanes against you. We're never going to give you those lane matchups. I I love the LPL. It is moments like this where you out there watching as well, you should feel privileged to see this kind of gameplay on your screen. You won't find this anywhere else in the world, I'll tell you that. NIP, great start in this early game. Two thousand gold before five minutes in the advantage like a lot of the time it's hard to put this in perspective because the two thousand gold lead in early game is so different than it is in late game this is like an extra 25 percent gold lead for nip and now they've also got themselves big items on their first backs to continue fighting if they can find angles draw might be looking for a hook Aki can easily move in onto this one. Doctor trying to get damage down onto Votic. It's good damage from life as well, but it's not enough damage from life. And Aki gets a third kill already. Milky Way lands the cube, but that's not a dive they can make happen. FPX, they have been absolutely exploded in this early game. And remember, this is the fourth place team. FPX, they beat JDG. They beat Top Esports. The winner of this series goes on to face BLG. Neither of these teams managed to beat that one, but still, high expectations for these teams. Life will finally be able to catch Shanji out here. I think he's just dead for this one. Yeah, this is going to be a bit of an overstep from Shanji and a good punish from Life. We do see this often on the Roman Rumble from Life. Good to see. Something positive for FPX. They are going to need it. They're 2-1 down, and what a start from NIP. And again, I feel like the, the, the win condition really is playing this game where Milky Way doesn't get to have the influence that he wants. Yeah, I mean, by the time the game was effectively over at early game, he was still level 1 and level 2. You can't yeah. do anything about that. I mean, it's been a long time since we've seen lane swaps be prevalent. The last time we saw it was occasionally around Season 10. We saw um, Scion lane swaps where you kind of say, that's actually going to be level 6 used from Rookie. Lands the charm. Oh. It's a solo kill. Kez just hit level 6 as well. Rookie's got to be a little bit cautious. Can't overstep. And won't. Close one nearly finds care for himself. Oh my word. See this that up. Um, <laughs> it's so tense. <laughs> oh like I'm, actually, I'm sat here trying to like second guess what I'm gonna say because it feels like a fight's ready to erupt at any given minute. See that rookie didn't quite get the Q return on that kill. Care, great presence of mind to get himself that um, last dash forwards to get himself um, yeah. the level up to level six. That could have almost certainly been a solo kill. Very. <laughs> Very tight margins. Look at the CS difference in that mid lane, though. 20 CS yeah. advantage for Rookie on top of the kill and two assists. I want to quickly talk about what you mentioned with Milky Way being so low level for the first few plays. The fact that we always joke about Poppy being full build at level <laughs> three, right? That, that's like an inside joke of the LBL. Well, the thing is, it's kind of true. And Aki has really, like, shown the power of Poppy in those first few levels when you can set it up. The fact that you can go for, like, literally level two tower dives, it, it just shows the sheer power early game of this pick. It has been an LPL specialty, particularly with that. Again, the full build pop, you get all your basic abilities, you are ready to go. This is Aki playing this poppy, playing this well, with three kills in the early game before five minutes even came through, after he was banned out four times. Milky Way, early pick Lee Sin, four bans against him, picks up a last pick Poppy and plays like this. For a player that was rumored to have people switching into the roster, people were practicing for the jungle roster, how vindicating is it got to be for Aki to have this game in an underdog matchup? You know, NIP were not favor coming into here. I thought it'd be a good series. I hoped it'd be a good series. But for this level of play coming from Aki, on a personal level, that is vindication. And on top of the fact that FBX's entire strategy coming into this fourth game was ban out Aki. Nobody was coming in today expecting it to be FBX having to drop jungle bads, FBX having to target the enemy jungler. We all said it would be the other way. What a day Aki is having. What a performance. And now he's on the grubs, gets the first one. Milky Way's in the scene, so is Care. Let's not count FBX out just yep. yet. Yes, they're 2,000 gold down. Diana level 6 is a terrifying thing, and I think NIP know it. 
Absolutely. Um, if you have Diana and Rumble on the same part of the map as well, it is very, very hard to survive that all in wombo combo. See that care? Even without building AP early, very happy to just spam Qs across the wave and get wave clear as well. The game does get easier beyond the first couple of levels of the game for the Diana. See that Aki um, sticks around to um, deny Shallow who that plate, I believe. I didn't see the gold go over. Rookie now forced to ult away from Doctor's Flash ult. He tried to get himself a perfect pick in the mid lane. Can't get it. So, flash for flash there between two carries. Oh, I suppose flash for ult. Flash for ult. Not, not flash for flash. Rookie will be very happy with the way that one's gone, especially since Stockton had to use his ult as well. Another crash in the top side, but there are three players here from FPX. But it's got to be a little bit cautious on how far forward he steps. His life close to six. A level six mark could make the difference, but no, I'm going to hit it. I'm going to say, if that was me, I'd be pressing flash instead of ult. Rookie gets away with that one. Great reactions. Um, Rookie, I think, again, one of the other special things about him on this Ari, which, again, you just have to keep saying how damn good he is at this in comparison to every other player in the world, it feels like, he's up in the top of Nasdaq, is being safe while being aggressive, too. The fact that he can push up, just use his ultimate there, flying a flash on the other side. It means in the late game as well, we've seen this before, he ends up getting himself into, fo uh, into pockets, keeps himself safe. You see that, again, every time we're sat there holding our breath, thinking, okay, there's a lot of people sit on vision there. Let's see if anything can happen. The game has slowed down just a little. But honestly, his NIP, you're kind of happy with that, right? It's Vitality Barris on the other side of the board. Care goes in onto the mini wave, but Aki is here. Care could look for an opportunity. The problem is this poppy kind of ruins yep. Diana to some extent. If Aki's in the area, it's hard for Care to operate. Oh, it really is. And, um, you know, even then, um, Rookie's been doing a really good job of backstepping on the Qs. So um, there's a way you position against Diana in mid lane, which is you want to stand in the uh, counterclockwise direction from them because it, that's the way that the, the Diana goes from it. So you want to kind of just make sure that you're still on the other side of the lane and you can backstep from it. Um, it can help you with that. I one. Think Rookie's so um, rarely... Isn't it counter moon wise since it's staying I... run? It's, it's the crescent moon, you know? Like, don't don't, really don't start clock. don't 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 you start on that because counter remember what happened with the, re, re, <laughs> Remember what they said about Aphelios? We're gonna make him more strong with the full moon. That was actually a pitched idea. I don't know how serious that was, but it just makes me afraid when it comes to the Lunar League Champions. Either way, ult hits in bot sun, that's the ult! Okay, that's a combo and a half, isn't it? Nice little kill there for life. Good opportunity. Dokdom finds it this time. And that's the power of Varus Rumble, ladies and gentlemen. Oh gosh, so, yep, that Varus Rumble gets Photic down. No cleanse, went for the Ghost and the Flash, which means that you have to be very, very careful with those ultimates. Some gold back on the board. And NIP, great early starts. But they are not done with this game just yet. And that is just a reminder of the damage which Funplus Phoenix have, and they are not willing to go home oh. quietly at this point. Dogton really wanted that plate, but he might just be punished for even thinking about it. It looks like not an overcommitment from NIP. I wasn't sure if they were just going to try and chase this one down anyway. Rookie did have his ultimate. As that ward doesn't quite spot Milky Way. Obviously, the Q onto the Drake, that will probably give it away. Just, just a little bit. Oh, that's a skill shot over the wall. Hmm, I wonder who that belongs to. It's going to be Milky Way on Vision, as he said. Now, double Eclipse built up for Shallow and Milky Way. They're actually at the points of power now as well. So while El um, the NIP had a huge lead early on, has been closed just a little bit. FTX are potentially ready to fight. They don't have the ults in their bot lane, though. They need to be careful about that. Rookie, first item, Malignant's incredible power spike for the RE cap. Building towards a Lich Bane first item. You can see that from the Aether Wisman inventory. But very far off of that. Had to stop off for the Merc Tread. Afraid of the CC combo from NAP. Rightfully so. But he's not going to be at the point where he can fully assassinate the Ari. As soon as you hit that Lich Bane, then yes, this damage profile is going to go massively up. And NAP will need to be yep. very careful of care. see if he can get to that spike while it's still relevant you know while he still has time to uh, influence this game aki getting ahead rookie getting ahead but to be honest i'm not really just looking towards care i'm looking towards milky way i think a lot of people at home have been coming into this series expecting milky way to absolutely pop off and he's had one mvp performance in game number two this game there were four jungle bands levied towards nip to set up Milky Way. Let's see if they can find the fight's life caught out though. And it will just be a kill onto Juo as Flame Choppers come down as well. And they're looking for a second. Doctum falls. Milky Way doesn't even get a look in. 
Milky Way's not even close to the fight. You can see the NIP, they waited just a second. It allowed Fotic to get in towards that player and he starts to clean up shop. Shalau who forced to use his ult on top Sh side. Shanji's in trouble, oh he was at least until a TP was channeled. Rookie onto the play and suddenly Shalau who the worm is on the other foot. He flashes out to safety but is followed by Rookie. And that's a beautiful little kill from NIP. Wonderful patience from Rookie. You don't have to throw the charm out early. Uses it to secure the kill, and Shallow who goes down. Life is going to stop the reset, though. A Rookie, if he's alone on top side, could get solo killed here. Oh no, he got the base off. He oh, managed no, to get out. It's the last second. The last possible second. It's only damage. Only CC blocks the last half a second of a recall. And Rookie gets out. Oh, it is so heartbreaking for life. That would have been a big, big win. No flash, no ult on Rookie. Could have stopped him from being on the map. Gets him, he would have got an extra 500 gold for a kill there as well. With a 200 gold shutdown. Can't quite get it. FPX, you I mean, have to feel for them in this last game. So many of these minute, minute differences going against them. Nymera, if that ain't plot armor, I don't know what is. <laughs> Rookie, the writers have written it. He is unstoppable. He is invincible. He's got his malignance. He's 202. He's got his dark seal. That's what two stacks now. And Herald started by FPX, but NIP not going to let this go without a fight. Shanji running up as well. No TP available for him. Shallow, who does have his. It's NIP looking for a scrap. Care wants to get in, though. Keep your eyes on that. Diana, the moonfall could be the difference maker. Shanji's arrived. But Herald might just Rookie reset has ult here. now. He has ult, they've waited for that one to come back. The hook misses, here comes Care potentially. Walk it is Shanji that gets the Herald, and now the fight kicks off as well. NIP just walking full. Oh! Moonfall from Care sets it up, but he goes down. Nobody falls. NIP, even with a five man ulti, they still make it happen. The plot armor is too thick, and Rookie takes it all again. Oh, the ninjas in pajamas stand strong. Strong, but maybe the narrative in pajamas stands stronger. There was no follow-up from Fun Plus Phoenix. They didn't have the equalizer. It was used on that failed base stop earlier. If that was there, this could have been the play. Care gets in despite the hooks, despite the steadfast presence from the poppy. What an angle from Care, but you just don't have the follow-up. What's here? What comes afterwards? Nothing. There's no equalizer. There's no arrow off the top. Despite Care finding the angle, FPX are left wanting for follow-up and NIP steamroll the fight. And everyone is so low. That's the heartbreaking thing. Everyone on NAP is so low in that fight, but nobody goes down, not a single soul. Care still not finishing his first item as Rookie will take a tier one in the bottom side and continue to escalate. Look at the score. It's a kill a minute this game. It's six, seven thousand gold in the lead for NIP. It's 14 to two. Oh my word. We are potentially ending things off. And let's be honest, with this gold lead, with this amount of kills for NIP, it's looking likely like it's ending things off with a kill a minute in the LPL in playoffs. We've had a slower split than we were split than we were prepared for, in the early split at least. Things have been speeding up inevitably as that Herald really drives into a wall. Rookie needs to be careful though. He's overstepped for this one. Spirit Rush gonna be forced down from him. Chwell waiting in the rush like, come on then, chase this one, I dare you. <laughs> Ready with his anchor. Rookie gets out, nice try from FPX. But as you say, the game's speeding up. And I feel like, oh man, Surely this isn't the way FPX come out. Surely this isn't the way the Milky Way goes out. Not in a series like this. Two of these games, the first game of the series, and now potentially the last game of the series from NIP, they've done such an immaculate job of removing his agency. Not like this. Well, this is the thing with the LPL. Remarkably unforgiving from regular season the Buck, which does not have an idea that people in here. Shallow who's charging his rage. He's in that Dominus. They're looking for a play. Rookie is spacing around, though. Dominus has been ticking for a long time. It's just going to time out. The angle. They couldn't find the angle. He's trying to he'd use that Dominus to get Rage up because the Empowered W is so important. But now they've managed to get their numbers in. They have the flank still, though. Yeah, they're kind of on a good flank. And it's a kick on to Rookie. How thick is the plot armor after all? He skirts out the top side of the fight. And he goes down. The arrow lands true. William Tell. Or should I say Doctum? Fotic charging forwards now is a hook and again from Chuo. He's been so good on the Nautilus this game. And Fotic reaps the rewards as NIP once again push forwards.
The level up from NIP has been absolutely exceptional to watch from regular season to playoffs. They had a lot of worries against Team WE, but here against FPX, they have stepped up yet again. It always happens in the LPL. There's always a couple of teams which level up again when it comes to playoffs, when the intensity goes even higher. Milky Way, I don't even think this is even a problem from him in this series. He's still good. It's just NIP have really come up to play. They lose themselves already in the front end of this, but it's not enough to see out that fight. With Fota getting a reset afterwards, you have to turn tail. Nautilus, pinpoint accuracy again. And this is this comes back to what we were talking about with that first pick rumble for life, but it was answered with the Nautilus Ari rotation. That's such an insanely yep. strong start to the draft red IP. And it turned into an insanely strong start to the game. 15 to 3. And like you're saying, the level up. Now FBX have to try and find a oh, pick. Rookie. rookie face checking again, but this time flashes as well as the spirit rush. And Aki happy to stay in the mix. Rocky goes between the goalposts, so does the anchor. But Juo just flies on in himself, and life is forced to flash. This time, life decides to flash before the death. Oh, Rookie is so lucky to get away with that one, but somehow he just manages to get away. You'll remember this will the day you almost caught Captain Rookie in that mid lane as well. He is a full item ahead of Cav on this matchup. This Diana pick, which honestly I like in the individual matchup, was derailed very, very early. NIP kind of threw caution to the wind and they threw Care along with it apparently. So NIP, they don't have to worry about that pick so much. I wonder if Rookie, with this style of game, will go towards Azonia's third. I wonder if that would be wise to allow him to play <laughs> even more aggressively as FPX. Again, another one of these plays just barely not working out. NIP toying with the idea of a Baron. They're at the very least going to clear vision, but Fotic cancelled this recall. They're just going to start this one. I think pretending that Fotic recalled there, he started recalling on vision, then killed the last minion, then cancelled his recall. Is this a genius Baron steal? And it's a charm out as well as Shadow, who's forced away. Baron's still being taken in the meantime. And I don't see it. As Milky Way tries to get the drive by, he's into the pit and he's punted away. Aki gets a home run in this one as he falls. Milky Way, the chosen one, denied. NIP are not here to play games. They are here to be contenders. From a team that people were calling, oh, frauds, this team couldn't deserve that record. Maybe they did have some worries towards the back end of their split, but as soon as they've hit playoffs, they have realized their potential. It's the year of the dragon, and it feels like there have been some sleeping dragons here in the LPL. NIP definitely among that number. They have really started to gel together in this series. It's the best we've seen them play the entire year, let's be honest. Managed to get that Nautilus ult onto Milky Way, which follows him through the entirety of that gameplay that he tries to get back in, and he so nearly gets back into the pit, but he only finds his own doom waiting. Can you imagine if he got that spike? <laughs> How Legendary. insane that would have been. Rookie surviving care, not being able to make this pick work, and now being punished for just where he stood on the map. Rookie can all turn care, flashes for the moonfall. He wants to find one, and he does. Life helping out on that one as he arrives on the scene, and now Aki being chased out of the play. Maybe a chance for FBX as they find two. Two for one is a trade they'll take every day of the week. And this is why you play the Diana into the Ari. You misstep once, that Lich Bane power spike 100% shreds you. This is while Rookie is a full item ahead. Now FPX, despite being against that Baron power play, are now going to cut some gold from NIP and stop them splitting the map. Can they find more? Juo goes in, Rocket in life, still alive for the time being, and Shaola who tanking on the front line, but he's just not tanky enough, and Shanji charging forwards, trying to get onto the croc. One more okay. to bump me! Milky Way finds the kick! Fotic down, but Shanji's just in invincible! Doctor now being chased! Milky Way can't survive against Juo either, and Rookie's arrived back on the scene! A triple for Shanji, even with everything going the way of FBX, NIP still win it out. The plot armor stands strong. Rookie comes back and says, you know what, I'll buy it even a Medjize before I turn up to this one. Remember me. He lost his name in that first one. They took that one and wrote it down, but he returns it in kind afterwards. This is what the Diana can do. Imagine if this Diana was not the subject of this early game. Imagine what could have happened. Kev doesn't get blocked out by the Steadfast present. Gets an incredible 1v2 kill. But then after this point, FPX, they feel like they can win this play. They just push a little too far. If they backed off there, it would have been a great denial of so much of this Baron power play from NIP. But not for the first time in this series, 
They push a little too far, and the, and the ninjas are really, really ready and prepared to punish them. Milky Way still finds the angle, no matter what. Milky Way seems to find the angle. That kick is perfect, but Shanji's just too big at this point. They don't have the damage to finish the fight, even with that extra kill. It's not enough. And it means they go down. Shanji is he's just invincible. He's three and a half items on the Udyr. My lord, he's going to be impossible to get through. And this is just not the lethality yeah. virus angle that you wanted. <laughs> like, no. who, who are you hitting as lethality virus here? Unless you're getting your arrows onto Photic and Rookie, you're doing nothing. Yeah, and that's becoming more and more of an issue. Hextech Soul now brought up for NIP, and uh, well, I don't think you win this 1v1. You've got to be very, very afraid of this guy. He might just try and take the tower and die for the cause. The problem is you start tanking as soon as your passive kicks off, so now Kerr's going to go down. He doesn't even get the tower. And in the meantime, there's a dive. Equalizer comes down from life, but Shalahu, he just can't tank it. The Orb of Deception hits. Shalahu walking away. <laughs> His ult is on cooldown, luckily for Shaola, who is Shanji, is walking between the Nexus Towers and zoning everyone from FBX away. That's a bot in him. All right, raise your hand if you're expecting NIP to win in this kind of fashion today. No, no one? I don't see any hands out there right now. NIP, what a performance from them. They have won comprehensively. They've won in the early game. Their macro has been cleaner than we've seen it before. Their vision control has been immaculate. You can see just how difficult it is for Milky Way to walk into his own jungle. Yeah. The rookie of the split, one of the best junglers in the entirety of the LPL, on what an incredible debut split, has been shut down so well by the team play of NIP. And it's beautiful to see not only, you know, Rookie having a great game, Aki having a great game, Shanji having a great game, but most importantly for me, Juo having an yeah, amazing yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. 18 of the 22 kills he's been a part of, he's been all over the map, he's been setting up so many of these plays for Rookie and Fotik to get the resets, for Aki to be able to be aggressive. And he's a player that's been criticized on NIP, he's a player that often has overstepped his bounds a little bit and been caught out. But today, he is on form. He got that Nautilus, and he has made the pick work. NIP as a whole, definitely showing a level of gameplay that we've not seen from this year from them. It has been a real masterclass at points. I feel like game one particularly was so one of the cleanest snowballs that I've seen in a very long time from this team, especially. And then coming into this game four as well. That early game? Who else in the world is doing early games like that right now? I mean. Yeah, this, this is. B <laughs> BLG the do that sometimes. <laughs> Even then, doing the lane swap like that, it feels yeah. like it has their own um, flavor on it. Of course, speaking of BLG, if MIP win this game, they set up a date with Destiny. And they, they get themselves do. into the double elimination and they start off against BLG. FBX would love to deny them that opportunity, but it will have to be. One hell of a comeback beyond even what and well beyond even what we know of them. Let's just let's just entertain that imaginary idea for a second of NIP. Oh, hang on, rookie. He's usually good at playing around the vision. He doesn't know he's on a ward right now. I don't know if realistically they can do anything about it. They sidestep the job. They can absolutely do something about it. Dogum still nearly dying to Aki as a rocket. Blocked by life. Nice little pick for FBX. Okay, so um, about what I was saying earlier about Rookie being the, the best story player in the world at playing around Fog of War. Um, well, that one's not so good. That was a bit of a... Um, weaker moment for him. Still, that's going to be double ultimate sound from Dogtown with Life, which opens up the gate to do a very easy Baron for NIP. It won't be on Rookie himself, but the rest of the team will be able to benefit from that one. FPX will, I guess they'll take the slim uh, silver lining that it is. Yeah. Hope they can survive through to maybe an Elder I mean, Steel. That is their way in. That's the thing. We're talking about Elder Dragon now. It's going to support it 29 minutes into the game. Oh. Like, this is so hard for FBX to play unless Milky Way can make some kind of miracle happen. And we are really talking miracle at this point. It's a 10,000 gold lead. And the fact that NIP essentially got Hex Soul without us even really ever talking about Drake's because yeah. the fights have been so hectic, the game has been so fast paced from NIP that objective control really hasn't been a part of the conversation. The objectives have just happened off the back of these crazy fights. Dogdom, um, he did step onto vision there. 
Yeah, he was just trying to hide behind the base gates, but I think he just clipped in front of it just a little bit. Can't get himself there. Milky Way getting ground down by Shanshi. Oh my word, he'll have to go back into base and regen up. And IP winning across the map right I mean, now. Care so hard down. to dash in. Even without Milky Way dying, he has to go back to Fountain. That's half of a mid lane tower taken off the back of that Shala who chunked by Rookie Ow. as well. His Fota continues sieging in the top side. Shanji's not even taken damage in the 2v1 mid lane against both enemy solo laners, and he takes the tower. And now NIP open up the top side of the map as well. This Hook? is going to be curtains shy of a miracle for FPX. NIP take three inhibitors in maybe the most one sided game we've seen in the whole. Playoffs. Way. He's off vision. What can he do? He's got flash. Can he find one last kick? No! Oh no, the rocket lands and Milky Way can't find his way in. Aki just goes to zone as Rocky Baby goes down. Finally gets the heal, but he falls anyway. The resets are there and Fotic can carry Milky Way. The kick looks good, but it just won't matter. Hard break for FBX after an incredible split. They are taken down, but NIP qualify for double elimination. Can you feel it in the air? There is something special about this team. There is something special about Ninjas in Pajamas. They gave us some doubts. They gave us some worries during their regular split, but oh my word, I am not thinking one bit about that after this series. FPX didn't even play that badly, folks. NIP showed us a level they have yet to do so in 2024. There's always a team or two that show us when it comes to playoffs that they've been hiding something back. NIP might have just been hiding in a whole arsenal of weapons. Guess that fits the moniker of ninjas. Those hidden weapons really stung here. I certainly did. That early game was unreal. The the lane placements, the way that they kind of cheesed the Renekton early to set up for the dives and then just snowballing like crazy. I can't wait for NIP versus BLG. Uh, BLG, a team that have been renowned for how good their early games are. NIP showing that they can play early game too. And that is going to be a banger. Uh, and particularly, Rookie versus Knight. I, I can't imagine a better mid lane matchup to be watching here in the LPL. These are the two best mid laners in the LPL right now. Rookie on form that we haven't seen from him in years. This guy is really, really pulling his weight. And in this series, we saw that it wasn't just him pulling his weight. I think yeah. Joe stepped up considering that he was a player with some inconsistencies. I think that Shanji had a monster series. He has to go up against Bin. And of course, Aki as well, in a game four game win, ends up taking a red five pick, the last pick in the draft, after getting banned away, four champions and a fifth one taking away, and has that game? If NIP show up like they did today versus BLG, I, I can't believe I'm saying this, it could actually be a real banger and potentially a very close series. I would not have said that coming out of regular season. Man, what a glow up from Aki. What? After the split that he's had, honestly, I really did not expect this jungle matchup to go well. I wasn't gonna say it on cast because I didn't want to flame the guy, but like, I expected him to kind of get gapped by Milky Way today. He stepped up in a way that I didn't think was possible. The Nocturne games look fantastic. The Poppy game, absolutely phenomenal. And NIP, I mean, this is not only phenomenal for the players involved, like this is the best the organization has ever yeah. done. And they're entering the realm where they can challenge what V5 were able to achieve. And the previous version of this organization, they actually have an opportunity to challenge that really, really incredible couple of splits that V5 were able to have. Hopefully they don't then follow up with a 0-16 split in the way that V5 yeah. did, but uh, that's a whole different conversation. And we say farewell to Fun Plus Phoenix. Uh, we say farewell to Milky Way on one of the greatest debut splits of an individual player we've ever seen in the LPL. Um, yeah. This result here does not take away from what they showed us in regular split and even some of the gameplay here as well. Um, I'm sad to see them go. You know, we kind of were bemoaning the fact, why don't we have double elimination for top six and not top four? It'd be so much better to see these teams there. I mean, <laughs> look, we have enough best of fives already, folks. And the, the thing about LPL playoffs, it is, for me, the most comprehensive playoff system in the world. It is cutthroat and FPX they were the worst team today did I think they played badly do I think it was because they made mistakes not even that I think that sometimes series can be decided by a team was just playing bad they were off form they were making mistakes I think today NIP showed that they were the better team and they made the game winning plays it's sad to see FPX go especially with the likes of Milky Way there as well but still yeah. it's sad to see them go because they had such a great split and we expected so much of them NIP were just better today
They were. And I think as well, part of the picture there is the preparation that NIP brought into this series, like especially game one. Like if you want to see how to shut out a jungler in competitive play, go look at game number one because NIP shut Milky Way out systematically. And I feel like game number four as well, a similar story where they have such an incredibly powerful early game that it felt Milky Way didn't have a way to, to function. And, you know, we start the day talking about Milky Way and the fact that even in games where the team's massively behind, he's like, we, we all talk about the 9-1 Jax game that he had, right? The, these monster performances, even while behind. But if you can stop him getting those individual leads and the team falls behind, I mean, what else is there for FBX? And you know, uh, we might actually see a rare occasion now where a rookie Ari game does not get MVP. You know who my vote would be on? Yaki in that jungle. Now yeah. this guy, again, you know, they- Or Chuo, actually. Chuo also had a fantastic game, but either way, the fact that it is rookies Ari that's not potentially getting MVP, I mean, I'm not saying that it will, but still, it's in conversation. You saw how good he was in game one of the day. Like, that's saying something as well. For yeah. so much of this split, the conversation was like, commander rookie in the mid lane, the guy that's carrying this team, being a second jungler ever present. You can see that in this game, really, really was a whole team effort. Shanji, monster in the team fights, monster in the early game. Remember, he had what he was 1-0-2 before he touched a single minion. He was 0 CS and he'd already been involved in three kills. Aki, similar story, just running across the map early game. The full build, level three poppy, four to control popping up as well. This was a team rising as one. Well. Certainly was. Doctum, a little bit invisible today, it has to be said. The bot lane struggling a little bit. Yeah. Life getting his rumble, but wasn't really enough. And you have to question the Diana pack you pick now in hindsight, don't you? The fact oh. that, you know, he, he got a five man moon moonfall. He got a five man moonfall. It looked so okay. good, and yet, it just wasn't any follow up. There was I no way to finish the fight. I'm not actually going to criticize the Diana pick myself because I think in any other game, when that level one doesn't happen, we see that 1v2 happening in top side of one item happen earlier into the game, and we don't maybe see the game explode that way. We can see what it could have done. How many times could you predict a level one lane swap which leads to five kills in four minutes? That to me really it's... takes, it, it takes away so much of the analysis about the actual draft yeah. of the situation. That's never gonna happen again in that way. I think it's worth talking about that a little bit as well. And not just the fact that they did the level one lane swap, the fact that Shanji was topside for the level one lane swap to bait the enemy into not believing that the lane swap was happening so that it look, he gets to chunk out the enemy top later, then he backs away. It looks like he's going topside, he resets and goes bot. Like, it was yeah. so awesome orchestrated and it feels similar to game number one right where nip are coming in with like these clear drilled level one strategies that honestly can give you such an advantage and did today for sure um now we have to wonder how much ammunition does nip have in the bank and left in the cartridge now and or other words uh magazine that's the one that's where you hold ammunition but um how much do they have for a matchup against blg you know that is going to be uh, that's going to be a step up again. You know, BLG, they just broke their own record for dominance in regular season. They still finished, you know, 15 and 1, same series score. They had a better game score than last summer when BLG broke the record for this format. You know, we've had, you know, the EDG undefeated split back in uh, 2016 back then, but for this format with the 17 team format, BLG have broken that level of dominance. NIP. Yeah as it always happens in LPL, will have to climb up again. There is no break in this format. There is no easy ride. You do get double elimination. You have the Guardian Angel now, as they call it in the LPL community, but there is a good chance you're going to need that playing against the level of competition. Yeah. Yeah, I will say the uh, the Ari in that next series as well is going to be tons about night. Two best Ari players in the world, potentially. Like, uh, absolutely incredible stuff to see. And who knows who's going to get it, whether or not it even makes it through a single draft, whether or not it's just banned every single time. I feel like with how strong Ari is and how good these players are at Ari, you know, that idea of fun versus fair, and we're leaning towards fun. <laughs> it's definitely fun for me as a viewer. Whether or not it's fair for the poor AD carries well, in these games is a different question. I mean, I might be, you know, slightly biased. You know, I've got my own little Ari shrine over there. I might have to put a picture of Rookie up there now. We'll, we'll get back to you on that one. But still, I mean, I was worried about what was going to happen with the mid lane meta with Azir being back. Because I felt like, you know, Azir has been such a safe blind pick, especially with Tank Azir before it was removed out as well. We haven't seen that come back to the LPL so far. Kind of surprisingly, I feel like that would actually be very valuable in a few of these games. But I am glad that the mid laners are saying, look, yes, Azir is back, but we prefer the early playmaking to take the game into our own hands and then just never let go of that. That game. I think the best Ari players in the world, which we're very blessed to have in this world, in this uh, league as well, um, have been very, very successful. Zhuo walks away with MVP 
after all of the criticism he has faced after regular season. Again, vindication for Dwell, vindication yeah. for Aki, vindication for NIP. And honestly, a great sign. That flash hook was phenomenal from him, by the way, after Rookie's Charm. But like it, having this game on the Nautilus, obviously the fact that he got the Nautilus is so often banned, but these hooks were just on point. He's so good at the pick, but great to see him having such a good final game of the series. Like you say, he's been a player that's been criticized pretty heavily, let's be honest, but He's managed to step up in a way that NIP need, and now making it to double a limb, if he can perform in the way that he did today, I'm confident that he can look good against BLG. Absolutely, and you know, um, I really feel like Draw and Aki, two players which have been criticized for going a little too far and not being connected with their team, no worries about in this game. It was an incredible game, as I know, it was a comprehensive team. And, you know, um, to do that against a team, the level of FPX as well, really, again, it validates that result. So, as we round things out today, Let's take a look at our results. 3-1 in the end to NIP over FBX. Uh, a phenomenal win as well. Uh, because, like, at the end of the day, yes, NIP came in and they beat FBX. And I, I don't think it's that crazy that NIP beat FBX today, but it's more the manner in which they did it. Those middle two games are a lot closer, but the first and last game of this series, absolutely beautiful gameplay from NIP. And now NIP go on to face the best team in the LPL, so we assume. Let's see if there's any more question marks to add on to that. Is it a statement? Is it a question? NIP would love to make that into just something that's just false altogether. <laughs> Other side of the bracket continues tomorrow, though. JDG versus Weibo. Weibo, how many series have they won versus JDG in a row now? Is it three in a row? Let's see if they can make it four. They are making themselves a deep bracket run yeah. all the way from the first round. That will be one to watch. I mean, I was talking about Rookie's plot armor earlier. You <laughs> think Rookie's got plot armor? You should see Xiaohu in some of these series. I can't, I can't Win have Weibo coin flipping against the finals again. I can't. Uh, I, mean, just, I can't stand it. it it's How did ridiculous. they get away with it? It's ridiculous. Uh, JDG, though, no slouches. We'll see how that one goes tomorrow. It could be another five. We only get four games today, uh, unfortunately, but it, it, it's been a ridiculous playoff so far, and I expect that to continue tomorrow. I've been Munch. That's been Nightmare. It's been our honor of bringing you this series between Rookie and Milky Way. Rest in peace, Milky Way. We'll see him back in summer, and I cannot wait for it. But congratulations to NIP on making it to the double LM. That's going to be it from us. Thank you so much for watching we'll see you in tomorrow in tomorrow's chat for jdg versus weibo but until then we'll see you in champ select